There's this thing over here. I'm not sure. The, the, the dashboard. Yeah. So, how do you, is there a number thing that's anywhere that tells you? Oh, there's an end stream button. Hey, if anybody is there listening or watching, go ahead and put something in the chat so we know who you are. I don't think there's anybody here. Yeah. Is that what that zero indicates? The number of... Maybe. Yeah. Well, there's some... Wait, I just saw something pop up. Where? Bottom right-hand corner. Hey. Oh, look. There are people hey, here. Hey, all right. How, how come it doesn't... How come it doesn't say something like there's a number of people? Oh, wait, there. There's a six up there. Oh, there's right, six cool. people. Wow. Right on. All right. So um, this is going to be a learning thing. <laughs> um, pop out the dashboard. We popped that out. The dashboard doesn't really say anything. It has, it has a zero on there. So it's it's none of something. Dot, 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 switch account, select stream. Okay. Yeah. So oh, there's, oh. there's, it's, it's so tiny. I wonder if there's a way to, to make the chat bigger. I don't, I don't see a way. In any case, all of, all of those of you who are here already, good morning. So um, hope you're doing, I hope you're having a fantastic day so far. <laughs> so uh, um, I'm enjoying my tea. I saw I saw little hearts fly by for a moment. Right on. Good morning. Okay. Well, um, I guess we're 20 minutes early. Mostly, I thought it was just going to take forever to get this thing running, but we'll officially start at the top of the hour, like we said. Um, and uh, uh, but you know, we could talk about other stuff until then. Absolutely. Maybe. Maybe somebody wants to type in a topic or a question or something like that. And then we'll, we'll do. So, Andreas, I got your email talking about how to get Zoom to tie in with the YouTube live thing. And it was eight minutes long. And it got started with like, uh, but so I just kind of was like, oh, I just, I, I just can't do it right now. I, I think that the beautiful thing about doing something like that, where you tie Zoom in with this, is that we could have like six or seven people, you know, each sharing and talking and stuff like that. Instead, I brought in Stephen. Yeah, you're always <laughs> stuck with me now. Yeah. <laughs> and so we'll, we'll see how that goes. Um, oh, I should probably tidy up. I've got my... <laughs> Look at that. There, I tidied. Last <laughs> night. And so before we get going, yeah, last night... We all piled in what we call Paul Theater, which is really my office. But I sometime like a couple years ago, Alan Booker recommended these speakers because the speakers I had were sad. And uh, and it's been nice. We can come in here, we watch a show, and it'll be delightful. Oh, here we go. Uh, this is it's so tiny. It just seems so... Been following you for years, but never really comment on the videos. Leave all, love all the rocket stove vids. I want to build one someday up here in remote Alaska. Oh, wow. I watched a video yesterday of a dude in Scotland talking about how he's been using his rocket mass heater for two years and how it's. I think he used, he said exactly, it's the best thing I've ever built. And um, he was talking about how they had a wood stove before. Oh, and God. it took, now, now I, I got to say, that, make sure I say this correctly, how uh, it, he needed four times more yeah. fuel to run it, but they always felt cold. And so now they're using one quarter of the fuel, but they always feel warm. And um, that's tremendous. I've, yeah, it's amazing how I've been in some places that were relatively well insulated and they had a, um, a conventional wood stove, but that fire goes out and the whole house gets so cold so fast. Mm -hmm. But with the rocket mass heater, 
it's like uh, the fire goes out at, you know, I don't know, let's say 74. And then it just holds at 74 yeah. for hours. And then it's probably, you know, towards later in the day that it starts dropping down. So we right now we've been uh, I think this I think this past week we set fires in there twice. So there was one maybe yesterday morning and then one on Tuesday earlier in the week. Uh, and that heat will will hold through the into the next day easily. So we're making it through the the, the chillier mornings. Um, I'm I'm grateful to come down from my tent down here to the house to have my breakfast because <laughs> it's much warmer in here. <laughs> So um, we just finished up uh, the staff meeting, the permies.com staff meeting a little bit ago. And in it, as we were getting ready for it, oh yeah, there's more stuff there. Do you think that if you pop out chat, it'd be better for you to see the chat? Oh, so. is that a thing? That's a thing we can do? Is there a drop down menu there for chat? It says top chat, pop out chat. There you go. Bring it over here and, and blow it up. Oh, look at that. It says moderation activity is now hidden. Let me just choose got it. Whatever. Yeah, whatever. Okay. Yeah. Somebody somebody may have gotten moderated. Oh, that's so much easier to read. And in fact, that's kind of this thing is pointless. I want to move this over here. Donald, thank you very much for yeah, that, thank for that you. pro tip. <laughs> okay. Uh, ask viewers to type in all caps so you can see their comments. Oh, I see. Well, now I can see it. I can read it yeah, okay. It's not as tiny. Um, so the guy from Alaska, I imagine it's a guy, maybe it's a gal, the person from Alaska. We have a fair-sized wood cook stove. It gets hungry in the dead of winter, but I want to build a studio for my video editing, and I want a rocket mass heater in it. Um, oh, and there's Inga. Inga, hello. Here's this is so no, I don't think anybody could see it. Ugh. This is artwork that Inga sent years ago. Oh, and look, there's a note on the back Hi, Paul Wheaton, watching videos with you. I see your hair getting thin. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. I'm getting we're older. Live. We're live. We're doing I'm it live. Older. <laughs> And uh, 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 now, oh, that's right. Inga knitted me a hat. And Inga thinks I'm a pinhead. <laughs> the hat was way too small. I had to give it to somebody else. I have a giant noggin. It's a, I'm a fathead. <laughs> I think you could well use a hat. So I knitted this one for you. Oh. Greetings from the Netherlands. Inga, uh, P.S. Thank you for the Permis Forum. You're welcome. Thank you for being. I see you commenting on all my videos a lot, and I appreciate that. I, and I want to, you know, the, give the thumbs up and all. But see, I I do enjoy this. But I, it is the only thing that hangs on my door for when people come to see me. Um, I love that little painting. Thank you, Inga, for making that. Here comes all these. So you were talking about the... I'm the, so glad there's all these people here. I was thinking we'd be all by ourselves. And so... Um, uh, okay, so... Uh, uh, you are still live. Uh, this is a thing. We just... We started early. Because we were like looking at the buttons. Like, what do we do next? And it's like, I think the only thing left to do is hit this button. So we... Apparently starting early is an option. So we're doing it. Um, I'm so glad that there are people here. Yeah, already. Yeah. And yeah, already. And that they're writing things. I thought. <sighs> so first of all, I got to say, I'm so glad that the Kickstarter got funded. Um, we, we're, we're, and Andreas has already started doing the editing for the whole movie. And he thinks that he could have the whole thing done like in two months and it's like um wouldn't that be lovely and uh um but i but i it, it's been so uh less than any other kickstarter i've ever done i'm feeling like did i was i a naughty boy did i do something wrong and uh um 
and I I would love to get feedback from people about this. Um, but and and then Andreas came up with the idea to do this thing, which it's it's a pity he can't pop in. He can type, I'm sure. I'm I think I saw his name in here already. There he is. It says Andreas. He says hi. <laughs> This is just delightful to have so many people here already. Um, I was afraid that, uh, yeah, yes, I'm here. I was I was afraid this is going to be a ghost town and be a turn out to be a, a, a turkey. But so far, this is lovely. Um, we officially start in about 15 minutes. So let's see if there's mm -hmm. anything else. Um, Did you have anything else to add about the person with this, the idea for the studio in Alaska? Oh, with the rocket mass heaters. Yeah. Have you built one from scratch yet? Me building one from scratch? No, I've only renovated or repaired them. Well, we kind of had the thing going on in the red cabin last mm -hmm. fall. Yep. And cut, you were cut a, sort cut a, of involved. Cut a in barrel, that. put some uh, put some cob in there, and uh, yeah, had a blast. <laughs> and it works fantastic. Like if anybody stays in the red cabin, they're like, "Well, I have to open the windows." It's like because they because they think they're going to have to overfeed it. Or feed it a lot longer than they really do. I think I think people will be surprised at how quickly you can build one, and mm -hmm. and it seems like I'm perpetually on the phone with people who are going to start selling more shippable cores. Uh, I have spent many hours on the phone with Sky Huddleston, who is the guy that makes the lib the Liberator, and um, uh, and and he he wants to make something that's more of a conventional rocket mass heater, but he wants to get it UL listed as well. Um, and uh, I've got, but the thing is, is that I think when you go to build one, it's actually a lot easier than you might think. But maybe that's just me because you know I've built so many, I've been involved in being building so many, and to me it's like obvious now. Um, <clears throat> I'd love to hear from people. In fact, uh, I I always enjoy it when somebody's like, I got the videos, like the movies that we make, and watched them, and then I built one, and it's great. I love hearing from those people. And in fact, on YouTube, not only is there the guy from Scotland who uh, has made this, he's, he's saying it's two years old, and it has been a dream. It has been just terrific. I also love how the guy from Scotland said something like, um, uh, we, uh, we had this conventional wood stove, which was not very good. And we had this couch that was definitely past its prime. And we basically replaced the couch with a cob couch. So we replaced this couch, which was dying after 10 years with a cob couch covered in cushions, which will easily last a thousand years. <laughs> and then we replaced the, the wood stove that was here with a rocket mass heater core. So, it, so the rocket mass heater did not take up any more space in their house. And I thought that is a really good way to look at it. Yeah, and replacing a piece of furniture that was on its way out anyhow, but yeah. use, and just using the space for the, the, the mass. And, and and the video that they put out yesterday or the day before, whenever it was, they were talking about how miserably cold they would be in the winter before because their house is so very drafty and how ridiculously comfortable. Oh, look, there's Ash Jackson. I was watching a video hey, with you in it yesterday. Um, there's, a, there's a couple other questions as well. Oh, there's, so, okay. I'm sorry. I just saw Ash Jackson yeah. there. Ash Jackson, it's been so long since you've been here. I hope you can come back soon. Are, in fact, I, I, I need to know, are you in Florida now? And, and if so, I have so many questions to ask you, which are all utterly inappropriate. Um, and so... Uh, uh, for uh, I've got at least one video with Ash. I think I have uh, a couple of podcasts. <laughs> it was it was the video where you cut down a tree shirtless. That that it was exactly that video, and somebody was was saying something <laughs> about you in the video. So I got an email, you know, because whenever yeah. somebody replies to a to YouTube, I get an email like this person wrote this reply, and it's like. 
Am I going to leave it there? Am I going to delete it? And um, so, all right. So are there? So you're you're reading all of this? Is yeah, there? I, I can I can be your. What's this on. about? All right. So, I, That's, so sit tight. Sit tight. All right. So some so see above so that. so the curmudgeon AK is talking about uh, having a concern about earthquakes and how that might affect their rocket mass heater. Somebody else is asking about uh, uh, getting started in permaculture when you don't have land, uh, and they met they how to start working in permaculture and making money. Uh, and then there was oh, oh and then there was one so ap apple apple about. trees and the old human or human or hugel cultures. So, so that's wow. not yeah. okay. So there are a couple things. Uh, take your pick. Oh, all right. Let me let me go up and then what's this one about vitamin D? That's to let the vitamin D in. What's that? What's what's that person replying to? Let me zip up here. A little bit. Oh wow, there's a whole bunch of stuff. Look at all that. Okay. Oh. <laughs> this is this uh, is great thanks everybody for for typing in the chat and i'm glad that i've got uh, steven here because if uh, i just if it was just me it would feel so ben. weird ben you were mentioning something about uh vitamin d uh, if i don't know okay all right because sorry we'll come I've, back to that i've been to. trying to get outside more because i find that i I'll end up spending 16 hours sitting right here, and I gotta I gotta get out of the sun more. So so Stephen's been yesterday. We we stacked some wood, and uh, did a couple of little chores outside. And so getting outside, getting some sun. Okay. So Stephen, which is the next one you want me to? All right. Should we finish up? Let me finish talking about rocket mass heaters. Yeah. And the we'll, guy we'll... in Scotland. There's a there's another guy who built a beautiful rocket mass heater on his back porch it's like an hour long video and so many of the the videos on youtube are about look i made a freak show of flaming death and i'm going to errantly call it a rocket mass heater but this guy built a real rocket mass heater and he did a great job of explaining it and you know frankly in in a way, I'm going to say it's it may be better than any of the videos we've put out. In a way, uh, any of the movies like that you pay for. Um, so uh, you know, and, and I kind of feel like I should go search for it and provide a link. But but uh, uh, maybe somebody can provide a link to the guy from Scotland. It's like Cairns of something. I can't remember. Cairns of Carabana. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I just I just see the name and it's like, oh, it's that guy from Scotland. And we'll watch his video. And it, he's, he's, he, it's just delightful. He's so delightful. He's and really that's a big part of what I want to do is for all the things I'm doing, I can't think of really much of any of the things that I'm doing where it's like I want to be doing these things things as much as I want to steward the things. It's kind of like with the permaculture playing cards. I believe I approached four different people and asked them to make the permaculture playing cards and I would help them. And um, in the end, I had to do it myself. Um, and so uh, nothing else seemed to work. So um, I don't know. I, I mean, I got to say, I do enjoy the PTJ and um, uh, and I, I enjoy the people who come to the PDC. That is always a delight. And we still don't know if we're going to do one in 2024. We have to hear from Alan Booker. Um, and so um, this the skip stuff. Up there. All right. So we have four minutes to go until we officially start. But. Did we cover all the rocket? There was a rocket mass heater about earthquakes. Yes. And uh, and I think that there's not really a problem. We've had a couple of little earthquakes here. Uh, probably nothing like what you're concerned about. But I like the guy in Scotland when he's like, uh, he's talking about, here's all the different things that broke on his rocket mass heater by dropping things on it or, or whatever. And they are all trivial. And uh, frankly, I feel like Every I feel like it would you would have to make a pretty wobbly rocket mass heater for it to be subjective. I mean, 
if you made a rocket mass heater that was going to be sad because of an earthquake, um, I think that it mm -hmm. would it would fall apart in a month of just regular use. And, and one thing I want to add is uh, the good news is that if you're if you're building it out of natural materials, it's probably going to be cob and gravel and stones, which are easy to. I mean, cob is incredibly easy to put back together. Yeah. Uh, so I would recommend that you, I mean, you know, you consider a, a traditional rocket mass heater build with uh, with cob being put into it. That's going to help you re make repairs very easily and on the cheap for sure. I would just hate to see it crack up. I, I kind of mm -hmm. think that if it's a pebble style, it's not going to crack up. But I even think that if it's made out of cob, it's like, I don't think cob's going to crack that easy. I mean, um, basically, as long as the cob doesn't get wet, it's, it's kind of like... Um, um, cement. So, okay. Um, let me have the mouse. Let me drive the mouse for just a sec. Hi, Samantha. <laughs> uh, Samantha says that she's going to be out here in about a week. Did I get that right? In a week? <laughs> yeah. You laugh because I'm laughing too. It's like, okay, I, I'll believe it when she shows up. Um, but we, uh, when, when is the, is it, it's over a week is when the uh, fall event starts. So mm -hmm. we have like uh, an October event. A bunch of people are going to come out here. She says, yes. A bunch of people are going to come out here. Um, the 22nd, I believe. It's the last yeah. week, last full week of October. Julia says, hey, I thought you were going to start at the top of the hour. Yes, we were. And we wanted to test to see if it was working. So we pushed a button that started it early. And, and then people jumped in and we couldn't leave. And, and this is... <laughs> This has been delightful. Is it where's the thing that says how many people are here now? Your your thing. So we've got 24 people in here right now, 77 views. So does that mean that like 50 people have ditched us so far? Yeah, they came in like, what least. the fuck is this? And they're out. Yeah. They're like, eh, I don't want to care. I don't give a shit about this. Okay. They had comments about your bald spot. And then it was right. Over. See how bald can they is that show up? I can't look at the screen and show my bald spot at the same time. <laughs> Can you hear that? Okay. All right. Um, we, is it? Hey, Rachel okay, Brown from Pennsylvania. I'm from Maryland. I, I would visit Pennsylvania all the time. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. So this is, this is the, the idea is, yeah, I gotta, I'm, I'm getting to that. Mm -hmm. And that, so then the idea is that, what are we calling this? Backathon, a backathon. So then, this is about the Kickstarter. So we have to we have to look at the Kickstarter. So um, I think it's this window here, and um, maybe we should. I'm going to grab this, and so the Kickstarter is at gotcha. thirty seven four eighty one, and so hopefully somebody watching this will record thirty seven four eighty one, and. Um, uh, and then the idea is, is that we're going to do this for a minimum of 30 minutes. And then, um, let's see, I'm looking at the wrong thing. Here we go. Okay. And um, uh, and this is, the, so Andreas suggested this, uh, and and I think it, I think that this might work, but we'll, we'll see. And I'd love to see the Kickstarter do much better than it's been doing, because this is, do we need money for stuff? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Has everybody heard about the well that we had installed this past oh. year, and how many ulcers it caused this guy, or at least the pay the paycheck caused the ulcers? It was like bill. three or four times more expensive yeah. than I thought it was going to be. But it's sure nice to have unlimited water now. Um, okay, so so we're going to do this, and then um, for every fifteen dollars that the Kickstarter brings in during this event. And so I'm gonna come over here, I'm gonna, I'm gonna write down on this little, so what does it say? It says 37,481. Okay, I know somebody, somebody put it in the chat as well. 481, okay. So for every $15 that the Kickstarter brings in, and maybe somebody's need to put, maybe somebody who's got a kickback code needs to put it into the chat. That'd be smart. Uh, otherwise, I just copied and pasted it. I wonder if I can put it in the chat. Oh, there it is. There. Okay. Uh, let's see. For every $15 the Kickstarter brings in during this event, Paul will stay on for one more minute. 
Um, okay. So if we bring in 150 bucks, then we extend the whole thing by 10 more minutes. Well, we will max out at three hours. I don't know. That might be a little uh, arrogant to even assume that we'll ever hit that number. But for every $1,000 that the backathon raises, the top three backers or raisers during the backathon time get to choose. Uh, and, and maybe I should copy and paste this list. And the, let's see if this works. I'm not even sure if I can do that. Well, it kind of did. They're, they're separated by hyphens. Yeah. Uh, so... So if if like if we raise three thousand dollars, then nine people will get to take their choice of one of these five things. They can uh, do one week of cabin rental here. Um, so that's the Red Cabin, the Love Shack, Allerton Abbey, the TP, Cooper Cabin, and I say Dog Star, the Dog Star, uh, Bartell's Bunkhouse. Um, if if they want a bunk in the bunk room or a, a yeah. bunk in the solarium. solarium, they can do that. If they want a if they want a couch in the couch balcony, <laughs> I'd say the advantage of the solarium for anybody who needs to know about this is that there is a there is a cat house on the wall in the solarium, <laughs> and you can watch cats like fish in an aquarium or just you know open up the door and pet them whenever you want. Uh, it's pretty fantastic. And they sometimes have kittens there too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so, um, <clears throat> all right. All right. Yes. A cat yes, house. A cat, yeah. We, we have a couple, they, we, I call them kitty aquariums because they have glass, they have glass walls on them. So you can see the cats actually taking a nap inside. So there's one inside the library. Um, and then there's one in the solarium. We call that one a caddy shack, which we, sh which we thought was brilliant at the time. And, and at least one of them, hopefully both of them, has a big sign that says, please tap on glass. Because mm -hmm. the cats totally freak out. Yeah. Do you need more kitties? <laughs> we, we do not need more kitties. Although, <laughs> although if do you've got a calico or an orange cat, that might mix up the genetics. Yeah. We'll trade you. Yeah. We need we'll some genetic you. diversity. <laughs> yeah, we need so. a little bit more genetic diversity. We All of our cats are gray and white or black and white or all black yep or all yep. gray <laughs> we don't have anything that's all white so um okay so uh if we raise three thousand dollars uh then there'll be nine people getting bonus goodies and it'll be the nine people who during that time are at the biggest number so like if somebody raises their backer level by a dollar and they make that cut of nine people then um, uh, they will, um, so let's see. Uh, yeah. So no one's put in, a, no one's even put in a dollar yet. <laughs> so far this backathon sucks. Okay. But those nine people <laughs> will each get to pick one of these things. One week of cabin rental, uh, one hour of consultation. That would be with me, I, I'm guessing. I don't know if, if you want to get a consultation with Stephen, uh, uh, we could probably arrange that. I'll talk with you about bicycles, about uh, cat houses, about living in a tent most of the year. <laughs> uh, the 133 hours. So uh, that's the PDC and ATC video. So there's 133 hours of video. Uh, a ticket to the October event. So that's coming up real soon now. It's uh, like a... It starts in like a little more than a week. So that'd be cutting it close. But so, yeah, we boy, that would be cutting it super close. Uh, or one of my books or a deck of cards. So we'll actually pay the shipping to have it sent to you. Um, and, and so we could do that. So that's if for every $1,000. So I have to raise at least $1,000. And so, so far we're at zero. <laughs> <laughs> look at that look at that look at that oh right, right. oh there it went up okay blammo blammo okay so uh we're that's is that 15 dollars at least we got 15 dollars. Yeah. so we need uh like 900 something okay. more to get to a thousand dollars i don't know all right now there was a whole bunch of questions going by a whole bunch of things i thought we were gonna 
I had some stuff to talk about, but we, it sounds like we don't need that. Did we cover enough about the rocket mass heater question for Alaska? So there was there was a question due to our remoteness. Straw is the issue as a binder. We have clay all over the property. Can other natural fibers be used? Yes. In fact, um, uh, so there you are in Alaska. Do you have weeds? You have like shitty weeds, you know, crappy weeds. I think you have to scroll if he's typing things. Yeah. I was looking for more questions and stuff. Oh, okay. So um, uh, I would have to say that, oh, he says, yes, you did. Yeah. I would. Uh, so one of the things that we did here is that uh, we did some slip straw. And uh, and we did the uh, slip straw with uh, the weed yeah. that's common here, napweed. And we've used the napweed for a bunch of different slip straw projects and a bunch of different this and that. We're trying to come up with a lot of different uses for napweed because it's it's a thing that so many people here are concerned about. And it's like, all right, well, one way to get rid of it is to get rid of it, is is to use it. Like, oh, we use so much, we don't even have any more napweed. It's we used it all. And they suggest fireweed, ferns, and wild grass. I think, you know, personally, I, I think we used all those <laughs> uh, for, for slip straw. I here. would go with, I would go with wild grass. I would just, um, I mean, the thing is, is that um, you're going to pull it up. You're going to chop it into pieces about an inch long or so. And then uh, you're going to use it in your cob, but it's always, it's, it's in the cob. So it doesn't matter if it's even got mold on it or anything, if it's already kind of mm -hmm. funky. So, um, and for those of you who don't know what slip straw is, you have your, your clay and your water mixed together into that slurry. And then you just take a handful of your wild grasses or your straw, whatever it is, dunk it in there. And then you tuck that, 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 that the, the straw mixed up with the mud into where, whatever you're trying to insulate that space in between, you know, part two parts of the wall, for example, you know, um, we talked earlier about one of the things that we're going to give away is going to be the one week of cabin rental. So you come out here and you rent a cabin and you started off that way. You rented the love shack for yeah, uh, a was, month. Yeah. That was my first month here. And now you've been here for over a year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It was a year in June. Okay. And, um, and it's, it's like, um, I think, I think part of it is, is that, um, and, and I'm always, I don't think, I think that what we do here is no big deal. You know, I think, most places do things this way, but but um, it seems like uh, um, when people come here, it's not until they start saying things that I realize that the way we live our life is so very different. Or I got one. Uh, whenever anybody takes a shower in the Fisher Price house and they use any product whatsoever, not only do I notice it, but everybody notices it and everybody complains. <laughs> it's like, no, they, they get to do that. They get the people. There are still some people that do that. It's, but of course, that's people using product in the shower. That's the norm. We're the weirdos. Oh, what? From India. From India. That's fascinating. Wow. Oh, and you're having a solar eclipse right now? Yeah, a couple of folks have been mentioned they're, they're watching it or it's, it's nearby where they are. I think that it's, when you have a solar eclipse, it's delightful to look at the dappled shade from a tree and look on the ground and there'll be little eclipse shaped shadows all over the ground. It is, it is wild. Uh, yeah, you weirdos. <laughs> and so um, it's, it's kind of, um, so I don't know. It's it's so you come out for like, let's say somebody comes out for a week, which is one of the things being offered here. Somebody comes out for a week <laughs> and then um, uh, I don't know. They 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 part they participate in meals with us. They they um, I don't know, do the things that we do. They they experience a rocket mass heater. And and, you know, this is a good point. We talked about rocket mass heaters earlier. And um, uh, I know that I have been chastised many times for saying that a rocket mass heater heats with one tenth the wood. And, um, and I agree that if I said they heat with half the wood, we'd probably have 10 times more buy-in to rocket mass heaters. But Stephen, you, you were here all last winter and you have fired up a rocket mass heater or two. I don't know if you ever... Do you have experience with conventional wood stoves? Yes. 
Yeah. So I had uh, when I was living in Baltimore, uh, I had uh, one of the house I was living in had uh, a pot bellied stove and and like that one room was really, 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 really warm. Uh, rest of the house, not so much. And we were constantly throwing wood in that thing to make it work. Um, now that I've been here uh, and I've been seeing, uh, you know, one burn in a rocket mass heater heats, uh, heats the room or heats the, the you know, the, the library and the solarium. It heats that for two days after an hour's worth of a fire burning. And it's, uh, I mean, and here in the house, there's no comparison. Um, this, this has worked better in the house than any central heat or fireplace or wood, you know, pot bellied wood burning stove that I've ever experienced. That's, that's where I'm coming from. I've, I've heard somebody say, and I think that this is true, that the heat that you get off of a rocket mass heater just somehow feels more luxuriant than the heat off of a conventional wood stove. I don't know. Is that, does that seem fair? I'm, uh, could you say that one more time? I was looking at comments. Oh. I missed it. I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, the That the heat coming off of a rocket mass heater feels more luxuriant than the heat coming off of a conventional. And stove. it, I agree. And the reason why is it's like a constant like heat ray gun that's, that's, that's hitting you. And then if you sit down on the mass, you can feel it in the mass and it instantly warms up your butt when you sit down on it. I, I, I like to put my feet on the side and uh, I don't know what that is. There's something about that, but, but I don't know why it is the radiant heat coming off. Of it should feel exactly the same as any other radiant heat source. And I don't know why it feels better. It, it doesn't make sense. It, it does. <clears throat> I'm going to say a thing which makes no sense. I feel like it's heating my soul. Does that make sense? It sure does. Okay, yeah. <laughs> for those that have experienced it, and, and when I see people saying dumb stuff about rocket mass heaters, and I usually think, oh, there's big oil for you, uh, then um, I I kind of feel like um, they've just never experienced one. And so this is a long-winded way of saying, if you come here this winter, you can experience a rocket mass heater and draw your own opinions, draw your own yeah. conclusions. But I think it is bizarre how little wood it uses okay. here's an interesting question has anyone ever built a rocket mass heater inside of a conventional wood stove so you would have the wood stove shell and then you would probably try to retrofit it with a j tube or maybe you put it turn turn it into a batch box or something i have a video on youtube and i think it's called a rocket mass heater hybrid and ernie did it ernie took the back of a wood stove and he made it uh, an insulated riser uh, thing with a barrel. And um, uh, and then uh, I believe, if I remember correctly in the video, I'm asking him questions about it and it burns cleaner um, and it does use less wood, but it's not as efficient as a rocket mass heater because I don't, I think it doesn't have a mass. Hmm. So, um, so, all right. <clears throat> wow, look at all this yeah. stuff. There's so much stuff. Okay, what do you want me to look at next? What should we all talk right. about next? Ooh, let's talk about this. So, first of all, I saw a comment Somebody from mentioned. Julia. Is this it? I increased my Kickstarter pledge to keep the video running longer. Okay. <laughs> so, I guess when we get to the 30-minute mark, we need people to tell us how much longer we keep going. Uh, right? Yeah, yeah. I was, I was going to say, I triple dog dare you to stop talking when the thing is actually supposed to stop. I'll try. <laughs> yeah. Okay. You know, so yeah, I'm going to, I might suck at this, but we'll, we'll try. Uh, here's, so here's, we've gained a hundred dollars so far, roughly about not quite. Tremendous. tremendous. Yeah. And so if we can, and we've got 15 minutes to go uh, until we have to, you know, start, maybe start timing things, start figuring out. Okay. Doing the math. Hopefully, oh. somebody will be doing the math. So, uh, Juan, the, the the person who is uh, suggesting or like offering to let us have some cats is asking about uh, any rocket mass workshops happening outside the U.S. I'm sure there are. Uh, I mean, you, if you're in you Spain, know, yeah, do you know of anybody who's Peter who's Vandenberg? 
Um, but then there's those uh, the Bulgarians with the uh, Gamera rocket mass heater. They sell the rocket mass heater. But Peter Vandenberg posted a beautiful rocket mass heater uh, yesterday or the day before. Uh, I don't remember where he said it was built, um, but I'm sure it's somewhere in Europe. Uh, I'd, I'd say check with him. Uh, oh, the video is from 12 years ago. So Monica's saying we're up $84. <clears throat> and so $84, that sounds like what? Um, is that five, five minutes? We, we've, we're we adding five minutes? Sure. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so um, uh, well, uh, we got to go faster All than right. that. All I, right. um, I, one last thing about uh, folks in Europe. I know they're on the Permis website. There are a number of people from Portugal who are posting right now so if so if you're interested in, you know it's not too far away from where you are hopefully but maybe you can uh, be in contact with them and get some rocket mass heater stuff going on over there out on the peninsula so i i do know that there's a lot of permies from portugal mm -hmm. uh, including burra okay <clears throat> so uh oh rachel's stuck in traffic uh behind an accident Ooh. I hope everybody's okay. Ah, what's the best resource to start a small DIY rocket mass heater project just to learn by doing? I'd say build uh, build something in your backyard, uh, like uh, if you can dig, uh, build a Dakota stove that helps you get the idea of the principles of what's going on. If you can't dig into the ground, then start piling mud on top, and then that's going to be the mass. You can just tunnel through that. That's what I would suggest. I, mean, I, would. I agree. I agree. Um, uh, Ernie and Erica always say, get a bunch of fire bricks and just start yeah. piling yeah. it up in yeah. your backyard and, and getting it started and try it out. And it's, it is, it's, it works. You, you know, you start to learn all the little things and stuff. Um, it's a great way to kind of dabble um, and, and start. So let's see. All right. There's a question here. Uh, I want to replace a wood stove with a rocket mass heater. Can I build one with a cooktop and a mass? And then we'll move to the one about the PT. I'm going to say yes. In fact, the one in Allerton Abbey. Uh, uh, I know Samantha has been out here several times, but I think that she probably has not fired up the cooktop, the rocket cooktop in Allerton Abbey. But that, when Peter Vandenberg first put that together, he he had a little bit of a mass on the side, and it could be modified to to do that again. Um, it is worth exploring. I I got to say that that. Uh, that uh, rocket cooktop is doing really well. Um, it's been amazing. It's, it's been a favorite with people. That's for, for all the rocket cooktops that we have. I think that one's the, the favorite one. Uh, there was a question about uh, cottage rocket at the PTJ, building one of those and taking it home. Is that possible? There are people that have done that in the past, but it's kind of like... Um, uh, like right now, the PTJ tickets are for sale, and I think we've sold like four. And it's like if we've sold 50, we can start talking about like things like that. But if, if you know, right now when there's four, it's like having one of the instructors taken aside to, to work on something like that. Okay. It's like, I don't, I don't know, because part of it is, well... All right, X Kyle Bob X, uh, we'll see you this summer. <laughs> I got mine. So, uh, all right, yeah. so he's got his ticket. He's got a ticket to the PDJ, I take mm -hmm. it. So, um, uh, okay, so I'm going to say a thing, and it has to do with the Kickstarter. And I'm not sure if anybody believes me or whatever, um, but I'm going to say that um, I think that, I mean, the core of all the stuff that I do is build a better world instead of being angry at bad guys. And I really feel like the PTJ has grown to be the core of that. And I have this imagination thing in my head going where the PTJ grows to be 10 times bigger than it is. Um, and that the movies every year get richer and... Um, everything and then this is what solves so much because it just seems like there's so much misinformation out there and there's so 
there's there's also a bunch of very simple solutions which people just don't know about. And I want it, I want there to be more and more and more and more and more. And I kind of feel like the PTJ combined with the low tech laboratory movies is a cyclic feeding thing because it's like I keep running the PTJ deep in the red. Um, so the 2022 PTJ was 25,000 in the red. Uh, I think we probably ended up about the same year. Um, and, uh, and it's like the Kickstarter could pull it out, except for the fact that it's like, I was kind of hoping this Kickstarter could go over a hundred thousand dollars and that would fund the PTJ. But, as is, uh, it's barely going to cover the cost of making the movie and, um, uh, you know, clearing out debt for the well. <laughs> so it's like, uh, um, in fact, let's do a check-in. Uh, so 37585 is now more than $100 more than we started with. So um, it's only at what, at least five, five more minutes, six or seven minutes something like that and so you know if you, if you guys could go out there and put more coin in there we could do this longer all right so all right i am saying when it comes to solving problems on a global level we keep putting out these movies but we also put out a bunch of youtube videos and we're going to try to do more of that and um but it's like the having a a, a kickstarter which is excessively funded is, is part of what makes it so that I can put out more YouTube videos, which by the way, I have a, a YouTube Patreon account. And when I put out uh, like 15 videos in a month, I believe the 15th video gets $15. And so it's like, and I'm paying more than $15 just for the editing. <laughs> and so it's kind of like uh, it's, it's subsidized and it's by the Kickstarters. And it's like having a Kickstarter do poor, do, I mean, I shouldn't say it's doing poorly. It's doing great. It's it's brought in more than what we asked for to do this. And I'm so happy. At the same time, I was kind of looking forward uh -huh. to having a whole bunch of spending money. <laughs> okay. Um, so there's a there's a lot of, a lot of stuff people are asking about uh, ovens. People had asked about, and I'm trying to like fill in some comments here and there. Uh, Samantha is elaborating on her idea. She wants to combine several functions into a single rocket mass heater unit. That was attempted. Uh, uh, if you look in the PDC ATC video, you'll see Tim Barker building exactly that. And, um, uh, and he built a, a fairly decent one. Um, uh, and I think what we learned is, is don't do that. <laughs> Uh, I think it's better to have, uh, now I do know that there are some people thinking about like, let's make something that goes with the, the Lorena. Like you could pop the pot out from the Lorena and stick an oven unit in there. And it's like, that's not a bad idea. Um, and so, uh, uh, it it, 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 we could try things, but so far I do know that we've already put the, the core block in for a rocket oven inside of that new outdoor kitchen where the Lorena is. So, uh, hopefully, um, that'll be on the PTJ list for this year for anybody that wants to have hands-on experience building a rocket oven. I don't know what was asked about the rocket oven. Did I touch on it at all? Let's see. Oh, I think it was about doing a doing like do it all in one kind yeah, of a thing. Yeah, I was thinking of a combo of Allerton Abbey and the Fisher Price House rocket mass heater. I also want to add a baking oven. Now, I so. do want to say that we're doing a lot of stuff right now with this experimental idea that we call a cob hat. And uh, so, so in fact, the half-assed holidays are coming up, and one of the half-assed holidays yeah, is like cool. Bun Warmer Day, and we're going to try to put a cob hat on the rocket mass heater that's in the bun warmer. And so the idea is, is that you've got the flat top of the barrel and then we put a cob hat on it and then a bunch of mass, a bunch of cob on that. So that way all the heat coming off the top of the barrel heats that mass. And then at the same time, there's an opening in the front. So all the excess heat can pour out and or, heat or, us, heat or, the room. Or you can put a pizza in the slot. 
and bake a pizza on top of your rocket mass heater. I mean, you're going to run the fire for like a half hour to an hour. Yeah, you can get a pizza out of it. <laughs> of course, we haven't tested this yet. So um, Kickstarter is up 269. That's an extra 18 minutes. Oh, good. Thank you, Monica, for keeping track of yeah. that. Nice. Oh, very cool, very cool. Happiness. This is working. Oh, good. The Lorena is so cool. And uh, and Andreas, I think we need to make a Lorena YouTube video and uh, kind of kind of something that just explains what is a Lorena. And so maybe because Andreas, of course, does those fantastic animations and uh, and the and the plans and stuff. And so we could make a little video that's like a two minute long video on what is a Lorena and how does it compare to other things. But I think the big thing is, is that if you're going to take a pot of water for canning and you're going to try to heat it up, it's going to take you the better part of an hour to get it boiling, to do a boiling mm -hmm. water bath for canning. And on the Lorena, it's going to take about five minutes. And so it's like, there's that. But, and that kind of comes back to the whole thing about how people uh, don't believe us when we say it's one tenth of wood, but I think that the, the rocket kiln project that we did last year, which is part of the free heat movie, that's out at freeheat.info. Maybe somebody wants to put that link in there. I bet, uh, you know, so yeah, dot .info. Um, and, uh, but what we did was, is that when you try to do rocket, or we try to do wood-fired kilns for pottery, for ceramics, usually they'd go through 20 cords of wood. And we did it with, I believe it's like this much wood. So I don't know three batches in an eight inch three and mm, um yeah, and so they one. they were done faster and they used like 20 cents worth of wood if they were buying the wood but um uh so oh julia my rocket oven gets to 700 degrees in less than half an hour and makes amazing pizza and julia <laughs> i want our new rocket oven here I'm hoping that we'll be able to get to 700 degrees in under five minutes. And I got a lot of ideas about how to pull that off. And so um, we're going to, we're going to, you know, so hopefully at the PTJ this, this upcoming year, we're going to try some things because it's, this is part of it is the innovation and trying more things. And let's get more hardwood instead of, instead of pine. <laughs> Are we growing much? I mean, we've got the, um, yeah. No. Service berry, we've got, yeah, but I hate but... to kind of cut down the service berry, but I guess we could thin some out and dry it, have it ready. Oh. I don't know what the BTUs in service berry is, well, but it should be better than fur. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, maybe somebody will arrive with a bunch of black locust or something and we'll we'll do that. Um, okay, I, I, I haven't been ke keeping up on all the stuff going by. Is, is, have you? So, so uh, th there have been a lot of questions about the rocket mass heater stuff. Uh, someone had uh, suggested other materials such as wax and a rocket mass heater to increase the thermal inertia, but somebody had already chipped in and said, well, that stuff is flammable, so that's probably why you don't want to use it. So thank you, Julia, for doing, for speaking up on that. The other thing about wax is, is that, how are you, I mean, you could, you could have a bunch of bees, but it's like, I, I can't help but think that you'd want to mm. use that beeswax or all kinds of things, other things that would be more valuable. Um, you would have to use so much wax to make a difference. Whereas like uh, rocks and pebbles and cob, um, those things are much easier to come by. And uh, so, and, and I'm kind of curious, and I know wax is something that has a, a much more powerful thermal inertia, but how much more powerful? Is it double? Is it triple? Is it twenty percent better? Um, so how much how much better does it hold the heat? So, so, so uh, talk about a coppice grove. Maybe some people are unfamiliar with that term or so, what we have here. Right, and so you could of course mm -hmm. be growing a whole bunch of black locusts, which is going to have a lot more BTUs uh, in it. But then the idea is, um, and and I love Alan Booker's presentation on uh, carbon negative heat, and basically. You um, by using a grove of some kind. In his example, I think he used um, poplar, but um, I kind of think why not use black locust? It would be uh, it's also a coppicing species. Um, so uh, 
But the idea is, is that when you cut the wood, it actually grows more and, and it sequesters even more carbon. And so uh, you end up uh, uh, with every year that you heat kind of uh, uh, sequestering more carbon than you use. Um, plus the carbon that you use is arguably always zero because um, it's in the part of the natural carbon cycle. Although I think that if everybody burned all the trees, then that would put us in a bit of a pickle in that respect. So um, the you know, so basically, I want to go one farther. Rather than having a coppicing grove, if you have any trees and you have like trees occasionally dying or tree or branches and twigs falling off the trees, and you just cut them into you know nice sized pieces for your rocket mass heater and put them in a box and set them aside for the summer and then heat your home the following winter, um, you don't need very much. Uh, um, a box that's four feet by four feet by four feet heaped is enough to keep this building very warm all winter in Montana. This is a three bedroom house. And so, uh, and we measured that very exactly a few years ago and we didn't even have any kind of, um, curtains on the windows. So all of our windows are bleeding out all of our heat. So it's kind of like, um, uh, it, it, I, I suspect um, that if uh, if we had the curtains and we had some kind of window shades in, and the house is possibly better insulated, we could have done it with even less than 0 0.60. So a, a box that's not even full would have been enough. So now we're talking about Heat your home with nothing but the the branches and twigs that naturally fall off the trees in your yard. So the stuff that you're already kind of putting into that green bin that goes to the recycler's place, uh, you, you know, just instead just stick it in a box somewhere to let it dry. And then that's what you're going to heat your home with. There's a little bit of feedback from somebody. I can't pronounce your name, uh, but they're talking about the, when you say one tenth the wood, what is it compared to? That's their, you know, okay. and, and anytime you say that phrase or you see That's that phrase somewhere, point. what so are you I'm, comparing that I'm to? I'm thinking like an old school wood stove, um, a metal box with a chimney, uh, as opposed to uh, a modern wood stove. A modern wood stove is going to do something to try to burn the smoke and uh, thus run more efficiently. So it'll burn the creosote, burn the smoke, it'll try to burn everything hotter. But usually that needs new parts every five years, like like the, the, the parts and it'll burn out and then you have to have maintenance done or something, it has to be rebuilt or something. But uh, if we say a conventional wood stove, which will last 40 plus years, maybe even a hundred years, an old school wood stove, um, I'm saying that a rocket mass heater will heat your home with one tenth of the wood of that. Now I am assuming that uh, that that wood stove, well, you know, and that's just on on average, I'll say, because um, and then and then I get a lot of people. In fact, I just read something yesterday. Paul Wheaton is such a fool. He's constantly violating the laws of physics. Um, he claims that a rocket mass heater will heat with one tenth of the wood, and um, <clears throat> so you have uh, a conventional wood stove or or a fancy wood stove, a modern fancy wood stove, and it says it's seventy five percent efficient. It's actually fifty nine percent efficient, um, and then a people will people will then operate that at three percent efficiency when they put a big log on the fire and turn the dampers down low, hoping to get an all night burn, and so it's easy to do 10 times better than a stove that's being operated at 3% efficiency. And so, uh, so I think we're doing, we're doing really good. Um, okay. Hey, so here, here, here's a, uh, here's some, somebody had mentioned something about an insurance company. Does anyone have an insurance company that still covers the house after a rocket mass heater install? I was going to comment and say that it has to do with like local municipalities and, things like that. What can you say? And you know, how can you comment on the insurance, home insurance issue? My understanding at this time is that most insurance companies that will insure it, um, they need the rocket mass heater to be a secondary heat source. 
And the reason why, and then once you do that, a lot of times your insurance will actually go down. And the, and the reason is, is that like, let's say you've got a mini split and this is how you heat your home is with a mini split. And then, um, and then the power goes out, but you got a rocket mass heater and you're there. You can keep heating the house so that the insurance company doesn't have to pay you for all those busted pipes. And so the insurance company likes that. What the insurance company does not like is um, uh, chimney fires, which, uh, and then Julie will be happy that I'm saying this, but so basically a rocket mass heater domesticates the chimney fire, which is a thing that yeah. Julia made up and she told it to me and I've, I've used it ever since. I think it's brilliant. Um, <clears throat> So, so then you don't have uh, a, a a wild chimney fire, which is going to burn your house down. And so the insurance company does the payout for that. So uh, when it's a secondary heat source, then they will. There are companies that will insure it, and a lot of times they're going to insure it under their. Uh, it'll it'll fall under the category of masonry heater, which the insurance company has decided is very safe. So not all of them will, but hey, check around and uh, and some of them will. And then it, same thing with building codes. Building mm -hmm. codes will, will a lot of times um, say, oh, yeah, masonry uh, heater. You know, that's, it's just a masonry heater. And it's like, that's cool. Um, most uh, most building codes now have stuff for masonry heaters and they include rocket mass heaters under the masonry heater stuff. So it's kind of like... Um, Plus, you know, and I want to say, if we're going to talk about this, <clears throat> I, I'm i going to guess that nobody here, none of these people, including you, have ever smoked pot. None of them have ever, ever touched pot in any way. None of them. And and at, and 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 here's what I think happened is that he, he said the same thing in the in the Missoula Public Library, by the way. So, yeah. And, <laughs> and so I think that uh uh you know nobody nobody had any pot until the government said it was okay that's how the system works right nobody nobody touches the stuff nobody has any of it nobody and until the government says okay now now you can now you can have some now you can do that um right that's how it works right or now, somebody once told me that it didn't go down that way, that once 80% of the population <laughs> was traveling that path, then the government changed their mind about it. Um, but I could be wrong. I thought nobody, nobody would ever commit a crime. Nobody would ever do anything contrary to what the government says. It doesn't matter if it saves you thousands of dollars a year. It doesn't matter if it solves global, global global warming. It doesn't matter if it makes air cleaner overall. Uh, it is, these things don't matter. You just have to be obedient to the government. And if the government decides it's okay, then you just wait until they decide that it's okay. So, did I answer the question? Um <clears throat> Uh, drive stove heat is great for drying that devil's lettuce. <laughs> is that what it is? Hey, are, how are we doing on time? So, so to go 10 minutes past, we have to have raised $150, but look, we went past 38,000. We're, like we're at like 800, somewhere around $800, I think. So somewhere. is it, I was saying 700, 500, right? 600, $600. We're 600 over. So I You're don't know. Engineer. Is there a, is there a <laughs> minutes report on on like how long we go? So, so you know, uh, there was also a question about uh, how we can save this and show it later. We're we're gonna look into that and see if we can make that happen. Somebody had asked. About oh, uh, yeah. I didn't know. I don't know. I mean, we're doing this on YouTube. Doesn't YouTube wanna show it all over and over again? I don't know. Uh, oh, somebody up from sixty five to hundred. So. I, I think it's time to say the thing again. Sure. So uh, we've raised more than a thousand dollars, right? No, not there not, yet. No, not, not there. there. Yet. We've not raised a thousand dollars, so nobody gets any free candy yeah. yet. But if we go another, we if we hit thirty-eight four eighty-one, 
that we will have raised a thousand dollars and then three people will get to each choose whether they want one week of cabin rental here one hour of consultation with me which seems dumb who wants that um the 133 hour package uh of the pdc and atc video a ticket to the october event which is coming in a little over a week or one of my books or a deck of cards so and in order to pick those three people we will look at the names of all the people we get a report from kickstarter about who did something when and for anybody who's got activity going in an upward direction during this we will pick the people with the highest dollars uh, uh total so if somebody raised their backer level by a dollar but it went from 100 to 101 they're in and if 101 was the biggest dollar level then they're one of the ones yeah. okay yeah <clears throat> and then they'll get to take their pick of one of these five things <clears throat> red cabin <clears throat> Right. Everybody wants to stay in the red cabin. It is looking pretty nice in there, too. It's looking the, great. The rocket mass heater in there is working really good. Um, and, and we've got the beginnings of a new Cobb hat in there, so you can make pizza while you're in there. <laughs> so, um, but now, with the once the Cobb hat in there is finished, we'll be able to really test it and see if this Cobb hat idea really, really does the magic we we're hoping for. So, uh, look, it went up. It's 38, 167. Yay! Yay. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for coming out. I was getting, I was starting to feel a little down because, um, I don't know. I think everybody, I, I got to confess, I'm never going to stop doing this. You know, <laughs> I, I can't imagine ever not doing this. I, I'm going to grab as much as I can because I got so many projects I want to do. But um, if I was going to ever stop doing this, then uh, it would have probably been, uh, you know, what was that, six years ago when all that ugliness happened? And you know you're amazing if they have to lie in order to make you sound bad. So uh, uh, <laughs> I'm guilty of fiction. <laughs> so uh, anyway, but the oh. thing is, is that I'm going to keep doing this. I, I really believe in this stuff. I can't seem to stop. I, I can't imagine ever stopping. I don't want to shift you again, but someone is asking, is there a, a, a time limit or to uh, when the offer expires for staying on site? I would say a year. Okay. I mean, I, I'm just making that up right now, but uh, in the past, we've had some people contact us and it's been three years since whatever. And, uh, and it takes us a lot of work to go find that. And then that person left and they've got the email and and uh, stuff like that. So at least if it's within a year, chances are we can find the, the stuff easier. And so, um, but uh, I'd say, yeah, a year. Does that sound reasonable? That probably sounds reasonable. Plus, we have the half-assed holidays coming up. That's why I should pull up. I should pull up the list of half-assed holidays and we could talk about the half-assed holidays. Uh, uh, yeah. But all right, let's not do that. Instead... Because when it comes to Cat House Day, that's a half-assed holiday. We're yeah. going to build another cat house. Well, I have I have a couple listed in my book. Okay. Uh, first one coming up is on 1st of November. That's Indoor Gardening Day. Second one is on the 8th of November. That's Apple Seed Day. I have a major project for that. And then the 15th of November is Bun Warmer Day. That's the day we're going to go and put the cob hat on mm -hmm. that. And I think we yep. need to give it kind of a cob back as well to get more heat to go into the bench. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, yeah, what would, you know, a cob cape? Yeah. yeah, yeah, we had talked about that. The idea it's going to reflect the, the heat. Right. Uh, that direction instead of letting, since it's a barrel and it's outdoors, the heat would go in all directions, but we want to kind of direct it towards where the people are seated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. And so get more into the bench. Um, all right. Uh how about this? Um, oh, your live stream is having more folks in it than mine do. Mm -hmm. uh, congrats on that. Oh, how many we got? Uh, let's take a look at our little pop-up. 37? 37 people <laughs> hanging in here. It says 195 views. I don't know what that means. Another bunch. That means we haven't scared away everybody. Okay. Okay. 
So I'm going to pull this one up <coughs> so that way we can kind of, I'm looking at the numbers. So we're just $200 away from hitting $1,000 and then people get goodies. So, oh, good. Lisa says she just upped hers. Monica says that uh, with the amount of money we brought in, we're going to go 45 more minutes. So we're going to go, uh, we're already 15 minutes since so we go at least another half an hour. Um, okay. Uh, do we have any kinds of things that people want to talk about that are not rocket mass heaters? So uh, have a cord to heat your house. That's amazing. Yeah. Isn't it though? Uh, in in Montana, and that was an extra cold winter too. That was a much colder than usual winter. Um, okay, I'm trying to look for things that that have to do like with questions because we, here we are. This is for the low tech laboratory movie, and so maybe we should paste the uh, the thing in here again. Uh, you, the Kickstarter thing. The, the Kickstarter URL. And so, um, there you go. All right. Earth sheltered greenhouses. So, uh, the, the Wafati greenhouse. Oh, there's rocket mass here for heated greenhouse, but okay. Earth sheltered greenhouse. Uh, we didn't build one during the low tech laboratory movie stuff, but we do have a full build, uh, on its own. Um, and uh, I think it's called Devious Experiments with a Truly Passive Greenhouse, which I think the title is fun. Um, and uh, I think that uh, the movie, I think the movie turned out really, really good. Um, and it, it's been a great success so far. I think that there is room for further optimization to grow more stuff in there and do more stuff. And um, I, I think that the ingredient that we really need is to have a full-time resident at Allerton Abbey who is also growing stuff in the greenhouse. I like the idea of growing something tropical in there. Um, but uh, uh, I, I want to see ginger and turmeric and uh, those and, and fig trees. I want to I want to dry our own figs here. I was saying I was thinking fig tree too, but this particular greenhouse is a little small for that. So um, moon gate. So yeah, Julia so, did so say she folks, raised her pledge. Yeah, folks that want to talk about the moon gate, the picnic table, and the con uh, and the concept of a rocket mass heater in a greenhouse. That's okay. uh, oh, and also yes, we're we're working on the rock. The I'm sorry, the the root cellar, the Sepp Holzer style root cellar in the October event. Right. So you know. If five of you come out that haven't already signed up to come out, uh, better chance of getting all these projects done because it's just a five day thing. I think it's I think Jeff is charging 200 bucks. So hmm. pretty cheap, um, uh, I think. Um, hey, dwarf fig. That's our angle. We got to go. Yeah, we got to go for that. Bad. Yeah. Thank you, Greg. All right. Let's talk about <laughs> the moon gate. Uh, uh, it, it, so it all starts with dry stack. And so uh, we're having great success with dry stack, dry stack foundation, dry stack retaining walls. We're using dry stack for all kinds of things. And um, but the ultimate test of doing a great dry stack is the moon gate. And um, and and I think that you could have like the moon gate that you see, I think it could have been built in the better part of two days, and then it would have lasted 20 years. But instead, they they took more than two weeks, and I think that what they built is gonna last more than 500 years. And I think that's one of the elements when you do dry stack, is it's like, if you, if you really uh, mm -hmm. work at, at getting all of the pieces uh, together, uh really 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 well it'll last much much longer but a lot of times you don't need it to last that long and it's amazing how you could build a retaining wall in two hours and then move on to the next project and that retaining wall will last fine for 20 years and then if you want to come and make something that's gonna last 500 years you can come back and mm -hmm. you know take a little bit more time building uh, big Big shout out to Tim and Lisa and Daniel. Those are like the three powerhouses when it came to putting that moon gate together. 
Um, Daniel stuck around after he was here for the all six events or um, all six weeks of events. And uh, yeah, during the during the skip event, he was putting the finishing touches on the moon gate. And uh, he was a really cool guy to hang out with. So thanks to the three of you all and everybody else who chipped in there. But I would say that Tim and Lisa and Daniel were the, 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 the top three, the top three moon gate builders. So hello to them. Now, I've got a lot more to say about dry stack. In like three minutes worth or something. I got a couple of YouTube videos about dry stack, but I do want to point out that um, we're at 38,207. So we need 200 and some dollars more, and then three people get goodies. Um, and then it keeps us going too. I see Monica says 51 minutes. And so, um, uh, all right, so uh, we quick summary. What is dry stack? Just so everybody understands. Ah, good one. <clears throat> so dry stack is going to be, in our case, rocks. Um, but uh, the, and let's talk about what is the difference between a rock and a stone. And so if you've got a, and it's funny, I'm going to say a thing which is going to sound totally backwards. If you have a rock hammer, and you have a stone, you can chip away at the stone and shape it. And now you've got something that's the exact thing that you need for the next piece. Okay, now let's use a rock and a rock hammer. And then you try chipping away at it. And now you have a handful of gravel. <laughs> so in order for us to do dry stack with rock, which is challenge, more challenging, we need to bring in three times more rock than we need. And then you're constantly looking through the pile to find a rock that's the size that you need for the next mm -hmm. thing you're doing. Okay, so uh, there's no mortar, there's no cement, there's it's just a stack of rocks. That's all it is. It's kind of like and we're going to talk about the picnic cable in a moment. How people have said things like, "That's not a picnic cable. That's just piling lumber," and it's like you know, in a way, that's true. That's exactly what we did. Uh, it's just take took on this whole picnic cable like stack shape. I guess I think. I think it's about 10 times more beautiful than a store-bought picnic table. Um, yeah, I'm looking at it right now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, a couple of things about dry stack. Um, so if you're going to build a retaining wall, so you want to hold this dirt back, and here's where your retaining wall is going to go. It needs to have a little bit of a slope, so it needs to lean into the retaining wall, and the rocks need to kind of be leaning in. So that way, if they're falling, they're not going to fall out. And then um, the true magic is that you're going to put a bunch of gravel underneath your retaining wall and then a bunch of gravel between the, 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 the rocks and the dirt. So the, the importance of the gravel is, is that if any water gets inside, whether it's, it's from melted snow or whatever, it's not going to do frost heaves to kind of turn your stuff upside down, inside out. And so it's the gravel that really helps to lock everything together. The mm -hmm. gravel is brutally important. But then uh, when you're facing it, it's like, here's a, here you're going to build it. You're going to do two over one and one over two. And so basically you don't want to have any cracks going straight up for the wall to kind of start doing this number. And so as long as you put it, the whole thing together like Legos, I guess, then it, it holds together. That's that's probably about 95% of, mm -hmm. of building, of doing dry stack. So and it works great for walls. We've used them for uh, steps. Um, yeah. I can't think of any, I don't, we don't, I don't think we have any structures that are built of dry stack, but we have a, a, a foundation, the, okay. the wall that's on the solarium, uh, uh, that, that bump out wall, mm -hmm. it's got a dry stack foundation. Cool. And so, um, uh, and we've got lots of pictures of it, but we should have taken videos, you know, and that's another thing too, is it's kind of like, uh, for the longest time, um, we seemed to really struggle. Like we would build cool things and we would really struggle with getting video. So for example, the cat houses, we were talking about the cat houses. I think those are very, very cool. We don't have any video of it that I'm aware of. We have, uh, photos mostly. Yeah. yeah just and it's like, I think video. that. That'd be a cool YouTube video. If you think that having YouTube video of the cat houses would be cool, say so in the chat. Or what's this? I don't, every once in a while, the little heart thing starts having little hearts yeah. pour out of it. I don't know how that happens. So like there's that. Oh. Whenever you push this. Okay. 
So that's like an instant feedback chat button to, okay. to, to, to say yes, yes, or, oh, okay. or hooray. Okay, I get it. Oh, look at all the hearts. <laughs> Holy there, smoke. There, there they all go. Okay. What an outpouring of digital love. <laughs> so meow. Yeah. All right. Very. So people are digging the idea of uh, Cat House as being uh, video documented. Okay. Right. Cat House Day probably comes up, I think, in January. So, uh, yeah, something so like we'll, that. We'll so if, if you if you keen here for a week in January <laughs> for the right week, you could help us build a, a cat house. But um, I don't know. I, I think uh, um, I, I think this year, are we adding more than 20 half assed holidays? Yeah, it's it's good. It's a packed schedule. <laughs> and, and so I don't know. I, I kind of feel like most people tend to come here in the in the summer, in the warmer months. Yeah. We do all our gardening, but uh, I don't know. I kind of feel like the winters are nicer because because you get to feel all the heat coming from the rocket mass heaters. Plus, uh, for those people that are worried that their toes will get cold, we have the uh, the, the outer boot, which <laughs> Magdalene was totally addicted to that. And she would clomp, clomp, clomp around in those outer boots all the time. And it wasn't even that cold out. <laughs> and she just loved the outer you know, so she had some kind of fashionable boot underneath the outer boot. And so, um, all right, fair enough. Um, but uh, but most people get winter boots and mm -hmm. uh, and they don't need an outer boot. But we have the outer boots for those people that want it. And we have extra gloves and things so people be warm. And we have all the stuff on the free shelf if you want something to help keep you warm. But I think that we have delightful winter experiences here. Yeah. I was, uh, I was very impressed with all the... Uh, all the half ass holidays, the ver the different things that we were doing. So I think of it as the growing season and the building season. So the winter is most definitely the building season. And we had a chance to do so many things that I'd never done before, whether it was whittling a wooden spoon or, uh, or the round wood timber framing. We made two round wood kitchen chairs for the first time ever for any of us. Without uh, any glue or metal. Right. Yeah. It was, and, and before you ask, you would drill, you would drill uh, an angular uh, hole, and then you would stick a dowel rod into it, and that's how that's that would be your pin to and, hold things together. And I think that that's if, if we think far enough ahead, we don't even need that, because you'll be putting a dry peg into a green log, and yeah. then as the as the green log shrinks, it'll pinch that dry peg. And that's the thing we learned. That was the most valuable lesson from our first time making these chairs. So now we have a bunch of logs that have been drying and seasoning since March. Of this year so they'll be ready for this coming winter uh and uh, uh let's see uh are there any times when folks can come and do work trade to learn by doing with y'all then uh uh yeah so uh, we had a guy last winter he was here for many weeks and then uh he was here so long that he got a free ticket to the ptj um, and, uh, and we've had people do that with PDCs, the PTJ and some of our other events. Um, yeah. And yeah. Another guy was here. Uh, he was, he was here for the early part of the winter and then he stuck around because he earned a ticket to the garden master course. So, right. The yeah. garden master course is coming up in Jan uh, J late January, early February, somewhere around in there. Uh, late January. Yeah. Okay. All right. And so, um, uh, so people could come now and, and attend the Garden Master Course for free. So uh, I kind of feel like we do a, a pretty good job of uh, uh, making sure people that have been here for a while they, they can attend our stuff, our events for for free as a as an attendee of the event. Um, and then at the same time, any boots in the boot camp um, can uh, uh, sort of attend, you know. Mm -hmm. So they share all the meals with everybody at the event uh, and they help out a little bit with the event, uh, but they probably continue on mostly still doing the same thing that they would do on a regular day. Okay. Oh, and Liv is, of course, plugging the, the new permaculture playing cards deck. I know I made a list of 80 possible new cards and I think we narrowed down the list and Andrea sent me an image of what, uh, if we did a new deck of permaculture playing cards, what it would look like. Now, I gotta say though, that we would want our Kickstarter, a lot of work in setting up this <laughs> Kickstarter. 
and um, and there's a, a you know if 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 this is not going to turn out to be a way for us to to raise funds to do all the things, we'll have to figure something else out. And so oh, it looks like we're having some connection issues. Don't know. Oh, okay. Um. Oh, we're back. Okay. All right. But hey, this is a good time to point out we have not yet hit a thousand dollars, so we'd have to hit thirty-eight four eighty-one. Thank you, Julia. To hit a thousand dollars. Another question to clarify for the work trade. Okay, awesome. Thanks. Do do work traders come prepared to camp out on the land? Uh, let me let me speak to that real quick, because um, you can you can camp in a tent like I do most of the time. Like I, but but. In the coldest part of the winter, I've ended up coming into the house, uh, uh, into the solarium. There are bunks available for you, but if you if you want to tough it out, yeah, there's plenty of room for for uh, for tenting. Um, and I'm in a tent most of the year. I think we have. Do we have like 30 bunks? 20, 25, 30 bunks, something like there, that. I, I wouldn't know. All right, we've got a lot, we've got a lot of yeah. bunks, and and basically we tell everybody, everybody gets a warm bunk. Every bunk is heated. And everybody gets a warm bunk. And so, uh, and, and you might be in a cabin by yourself, or you could be in uh, like the solarium. There's six mm -hmm. bunks in the solarium, four bunks in the bunk room. But uh, if you're in the teepee, there's just one bed in there. Um, is it, how many, oh, yeah. the, I think the Love Shack and the Red Cabin, don't they both have two bunks? Well, if you're a small person, you can be on the second bunk. You know, if you're willing to be the, the, the yeah. person to tuck in up there. Um, a lot of people, uh, like when I was staying in there, I used that as a storage shelf yeah. for stuff. But yeah, yeah, if you have like, I don't know if you want to go into the thistle program, but you could have a, a small person, you know, a young person up on that upper bunk and then the, the adult would sleep below. The thistle program is where uh, uh, people of the age of 12 to 17 can be here um uh with their parental unit um and uh uh and we you know we've we've had some people do it uh just a few weeks ago a month ago or so I'm, i was reading the comments what did i miss I'm uh sorry. thistle program yes yeah yeah okay yeah it was a mom and three of her yeah it was three of her kids but one of her kids was 18 so yeah, yeah. So, so really just two you know, it, was, it was two adults and then two minors and they did well they did mm -hmm. great and and i think whenever we've had kids here it's been uh, a mix and so it's like yeah. uh if if your kid is great it's great and if your kid is not so we kind of um, after having a, a poor experience then um uh des and magla and i came up with a set of rules and um uh, that seems to be the stuff that really makes it great. In fact, there was a mom here with her boy, and uh, the boy uh, was fine for a while, and then he became snotty, and she just grabbed him and took him out of here. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, <laughs> nice! <laughs> and take that sh snotty shit out. <laughs> so, um, uh, I, so, all right. How's our Kickstarter doing? Um, I don't know if it's budged. Short, short of, uh, just a bit short of our our 1,000 goal here. Okay, so we go 51 minutes past. So then that would mean that we go to 11.21 local time. So we've got right. about 15 minutes left. Uh, unless more people put more coin into the thingamabob. And uh, do we need to put that link in there again? Okay. All right, Josie. Uh, I uh, to to come to follow up your comment here. You're very interested in the Roundwood building. Furniture building is great. Um, furniture uh, building construction with Roundwood timber is much more challenging, but it can be much more satisfying. I mean, it depends oh, yeah. on what you want. I re me personally, I really enjoy uh, putting the furniture together. Um, and and the process of like you you have that draw knife in your hands and you're like shh, shh, and then and that that bark comes off of the branches and all that stuff that's uh that that's a there's no other tool that lets you feel that way i, I don't know that's the way i can i can describe it i um, there is i mean uh 
either operating the draw knife uh, or the spud peeler uh, or a hand plane. Uh, this is somehow now we're getting into wood, wood, woodworkers Valhalla stuff. Yeah, go ahead explain yeah. what woodworkers Ooh, Valhalla. Right, is. Somebody asked about the picnic table. Yeah, so <laughs> so uh, picnic table uh, round wood picnic table 1.0 is up at the caldera. And um, with that, uh, they uh, use saddle joints, you know, to, to build things. And then for this top part, they used um, a, a deck screws to hold that on. But it is round wood that was shaped. And it was. Yep. Yeah. And then so uh, um, uh, I came up with some uh, ideas for variations of that. And that's 2.0. And then this one out here is 3.0. And so this is me and Alice out here talking and um, and we kind of went back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. So what we have now is a picnic table that is so big and the top planks are so fat that um, each top plank, while flat on the top, is so thick and fat that and it's so long, it's 12 feet long. And so it's so heavy that the whole thing is held together with gravity Just by gravity <laughs> and and it's like so we didn't even use dowels um and it was put together with all green wood um it is a work of art it's just beautiful and that's going to be in this movie the low-tech laboratory movie two and so um uh i'm i've so both the the building of the moon gate and the building of, of the Roundwood Picnic Table 3.0, both in there. And it's like, there and, and there was a tree that was dropped up here to make a road. And and so the tree is dropped and it's just sitting there. And it's like, well, what are we going to do for wood for the picnic table? And it's like, how about that? Yeah, there and, go. and so then um, uh, we just one day uh, at dinner, it's like, hey, could we get a bunch of people together to go move some big ass logs around? Yeah. And so... Uh, People volunteered. It was we had more volunteers than we needed for that. Yeah, and chance. so we just carried the whole thing down there. And on top of that, oh, I was trying to say this earlier. We used to struggle with getting video of stuff, just mm -hmm. getting raw video. And the, uh, the last year, we've gotten tons of video because we say for every minute of video that appears in the final movie, we will dole out this many dollars from the Kickstarter if the Kickstarter makes at least $50,000. So if you want to see all those video takers get paid so that there gets to be more video for future events, we got to get over $50,000 on this Kickstarter. And uh, it looks like, I don't know, is it still stuck? Is there? I don't think there's been anything for a while yet. Oh, right, wait, there it go. goes. 532. Ooh. Yeah, we're now hey, over, we're, a we're over a thousand. Three people get goodies. All right, congratulations, everybody. We need Thank somebody you. to do the minutes math now. Oh. Yeah, that's nice. That's nice. That's gonna be cool. We're, we're gonna give All people right. stuff. What five thirty? Well, it, right oh, look, there's there's a little celebrating yeah. things pouring out of the heart. <laughs> Did you hear about this bed built by two lesbians? It was all. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh. Zing. Oh, I, I just fell for that. I just read that out loud. Uh, that's actually not bad. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Um, I so I think that uh, uh, roundwood timber framing like. Uh, the greenhouse or um, uh, the wafatis or the berm sheds. I think it's soul building. It's and uh, you know, come on down and, and uh, I think each week for whatever we're doing, don't we do a little bit of roundwood timber framing somewhere? Um, there's always a lot of projects. Okay. So uh, 70 minutes, 70 minutes. Okay. So uh so let's see, if we go to a 10.30 plus an hour and 10 minutes, it takes us to 11.40. So we've got about a half hour more to go. Cool. Unless right. people put more money in. Right. Okay. So. Um, I'll make myself another cup of tea for this one. 
I think I think another thing about roundwood timber framing is while it does take more time to shape the log, the alternative is is that you're going to take the log to the sawmill, and then cut it up into a bunch of wood, and then dry it, and then bring it over, and then you still have to cut on it to shape it to build something out of it. And so, I feel like roundwood timber framing framing is slower than starting with dimensional lumber. But I think in the end, it probably takes the same amount of time or maybe even less uh, if you're going to just do roundwood timber framing as opposed to, um, you know, taking it to the sawmill first. Yeah, so I mean, it, unless you buy your lumber from the store, then it's Which, the same amount of, same amount of, you know, it's, it's probably more waste if you, you know, if, if you uh, make your own lumber. We do have a sawmill on the property. Yeah, that's is, why I was thinking about that. It is a solar sawmill. Yeah. I, I have never... Yeah. Wes I, and I were in that video. We, we made the video about uh, how a solar sawmill works. And, do uh, we have the only solar sawmill? I would not be the person to ask. I, I know I we don't have know. a... <laughs> I don't know of anybody have... else that has a solar sawmill. I, we might have the only solar sawmill. But that's kind of our... Our values. So I don't know if if a, if a person. So somebody is going to have the op. They they, they, get, they get to pick one of the five things. So three people. It's three people get to pick from the list of five things, right? And so uh, and so three people could each pick one week here, mm -hmm. and then uh, now you're the high commander of the boot camp. So if that person wants to spend time in the boot camp, they don't direct what is worked on, but they are, they can ask. And a lot of times they can get what they're after. Absolutely. Absolutely. And so if a person said, I want to fire up the solar sawmill, that'll probably happen. Absolutely. Especially since it's building season coming up, but we use it throughout the year. We definitely use it during the colder months. So, yeah. So, um, I, I kind of feel like there's going to be, um, there's a lot of so if you want to build the uh, probably the log chair stuff or the log furniture, uh, we do that. Mm -hmm. um, you know anything with uh, greenwood stuff, we do a lot with that. But then there's also you know usually cob. If you want to do some cob, there's some cob hats we're building right now. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it seems like uh, so cob is the natural builder's duct tape. Yeah, I've kind of fallen in love with building with cob since I've been here. Um, I want to I want to build with it all the time now. I, I feel like at the PTJ, we get a lot of people who come and they they are professional carpenters. They they are contractors. They build stuff. And it's yeah, like they yeah. just, the idea of the things that we do makes no sense. Like it cannot possibly work. And so they come to kind of be part of the PTJ and build this stuff. And, and then they end up at the end of the two weeks kind of feeling like, I did it. Uh, now it makes sense. Now I understand. And then the same thing for when we have rocket mass heater stuff. It's like, uh, or, or even I think, even before you're going to build a rocket mass heater, wouldn't you like to at least try one out? I mean, so if somebody came right now and they stayed in the red cabin for a week, then yeah, uh, I'd, I'd coach you how to use a rocket mass heater in there. And then, uh, you know, eventually you'd be lighting it on your own. We should have videoed Helen Atow last winter uh. <laughs> as she was running it and and she's like i have to have a rocket mass heater and uh and it, and and she she was completely smitten with it and how much heat she got for so little wood um because she's used to uh and her her uh wood stove is a soapstone wood stove a fancy pants oh, wow. soapstone wood wow. stove yeah it's amazing how how hooked you get on a rocket mass heater and um how I mean, if if especially if it's got a mass you can sit on, that is a that is an odd sensation. So it's it's worth. So all right, all right. So uh, what's the next what's the next question up here? What are, where are we oh, at? Okay, well let's see. There's uh, somebody asked about wood gasification. So we haven't done any experiments here. Go ahead and explain what your thoughts are on wood gasification. 
Well, it is a different style of getting a, a fire out. And a lot of people think it's a lot cleaner. And I'm open to that. I just don't have any experience and I have very little knowledge. I mean, when usually when I'm talking to people about wood gasification, they're talking about trying to extract the gases off of the wood so that they could either make something that's a, uh, like a gasoline substitute or they're trying to get biogases or they're trying to make biochar. Um so, but but there is a process where it's basically a wood stove of sorts, and the way that it does it is is different. I mean, basically, when you when you burn it as a rocket mass heater, the the flames coming off of it is the gases being released off of it, and mm -hmm. the gases burning. And so it's similar to gasification, but apparently the the stuff that they call a wood gasifier stove does something slightly different which i don't understand and i haven't tried um i i i, I don't know I, it does look like they're kind of batchy like like you feed it from the top the one the picture i once saw is you feed it from the top I, well, i've seen uh videos of not videos um photographs of people who had world cars during world war ii and they were trying to experiment with wood gasification to, right to you know to move an automobile so basically what they would do is, is that um, if, if memory serves, there would be a firebox and you would run fire in there. And then there would be a bunch of wood above that. And then as the wood above it is heated up, then um, the gases come off and are fed into the engine. Yes. Yeah. And, then, um, and then later it'll leave behind this char, which you could then throw into the firebox below when you throw fresh wood into the top. But it turned out to be very. They didn't work very good. They they were yeah. They they kind of abandoned that technology as soon as they were able to go back to internal combustion conventional yeah. fuels petroleum yeah. fuels. Yeah. They were like no wood gasification was just the plan C. So, uh, we hit thirty eight five thirty four about fifteen minutes ago, and we're still there. Wow. And so. Um, uh, Somebody put up uh, uh, 70 minutes, and so... Um, yeah, two uh, minutes left? All right, is, if that's the case. Oh, I think, is that what it's saying? I think it is. I think All it right. is saying two minutes left. But then there's one, maybe we can wrap on this, although it's not necessarily related to this. You had, uh, talk, you had mentioned the word biochar. Now, a lot of people always ask us about biochar and why they don't see biochar around here very much at least in terms of us making our own. So could you speak up and speak to that topic a little bit? I think, I think if we just magically had biochar here mm -hmm. that, Oh yeah, let's put it wherever we grow stuff. It's great. Mm -hmm. It's wonderful. And charcoal in general is just a great thing to have around the homestead. There's all kinds of uses for it. But a lot of times people are talking about like, you know, Let's do biochar and uh, where's your biochar pit? Yeah, and it's kind of like biochar is really, really, really awesome in a tropical climate because you you go through all the steps to make it, and then you kind of use it like cuticulture. You put it in the soil, and it'll last. It'll have a half life of like five hundred years. And up here, it'll have a half life probably at least five hundred years, maybe even longer. But yet, that's so long. It's like it's it's you know not even worth talking about. On the other hand, um, you took wood and you put it into something that is going to um, get the biogas to come off of it to make a charcoal. Then you're going to take that remaining charcoal and you're going to uh, then go and use it somewhere. So you had to heat it up somehow in order to be able to get that charcoal. Um, and so, and the, and the process of heating is usually they use wood in some way to do it. And so you'll put a bunch of, you'll burn a bunch of wood to do it. And usually it's a very smoky process. I mean, there's ways to do it that aren't smoky, but usually when people do it, it's a very smoky process, which can't be good for the environment. Uh, and at the same time, um, uh, you're going to just put a lot of carbon up in the atmosphere in order to end up with your biochar. So you might use four units of wood to have one unit of biochar, or maybe even 10 units of wood to have one unit of biochar. Or you could take that same 10 units of wood and put it into hugel culture. And then as that wood rots, it'll do pretty much all the same magic. 
So, so it's saying 73 minutes. Um, let's see. Oh, it went up a more, it went up a bit more. Yeah, it went up a little bit more. Okay, so 73 minutes is what's being said here. So if we were going to go to 10.30, we went an hour more to 11.30, then that would be 60 minutes. And then 13 minutes more, so uh, we go to uh, uh, 11.41. Did I do that right? Did I do that math right? So uh, we've got another 20 minutes. Maybe we should put the link in there again. Oh, I just did. It's, oh, okay. It's, it's oh, right there it is. It's right there. Okay, okay. All and then right. Greg says, dang, I need to come out and make you a smokeless pile of biochar. Of biochar. So Greg's our guys. biochar guy. <laughs> and um, and it's like, and Greg is right. It does do amazing magical things, mm -hmm. which are remarkably similar to what rotten wood and hugel culture will do. Um, however, it is slightly different. And so it would be optimal if you have um, uh, uh, both Hugo culture with biochar in it, that would be even better. Um, so, uh, but you know, it, it is going to take a bit. So, uh, right. um, can you use a uh, uh, can you use feedstock other than wood for making biochar? Yes, yes. although you know, granted, Greg's going to be the expert, but. Um, I wouldn't. I would think that you could probably use like horse poopies. That would work. That would be very yeah, smokeless. Yeah. Um, and uh, uh, I would imagine um, some other kind of plant matter would work. I would. I wonder if I suspect like bones of animals. Like if you just had this mountain of bones, you could probably turn those into biochar. Yeah. I mean, like when you do the thing about making the bone sauce. My memory is is that the bones the you bones, pull out, yeah, the, been, the bones are left over after that, and they are, yeah. you know, basically char. And so we're making bone sauce next week. So, um, oh, seventy-five minutes. We added a few more minutes. Maybe that was Polly doing that. So um, uh, I remember Polly. Uh, uh, she supported our our permaculture playing cards Kickstarter, and we did a thing where everybody who supported at a certain level had their name hidden in the card. So I think we have 26 names hidden in some of the cards. And uh, and I think Polly had us put something really weird in. <laughs> and it's like, well, that doesn't, that, that's really weird, but sure, we'll do that. <laughs> Whatever. Two, two, two other topics came through here. So someone had mentioned that they were looking to generate electricity from a stream, with low flow, but a 200 foot fall. Wow. Uh, do you have any uh, suggestions for them to move forward on that kind of idea? Oh, wow. Yeah. 200, 200 feet uh, fall. That's, you know, 200 feet of head. Uh, that, that should, that should do quite a lot. Um, there's a lot of uh, high, micro hydro generators that would just love that. And, and do great with that. Um, uh, so um, uh, I, I would say, um, I mean, I don't, I have not uh, built micro hydro before, but I have seen so many micro hydro setups and talked to so many people about it that um, I, it sounds like you have a delightful opportunity. So, um, oh, now they're talking about a tromp. Uh, so a trump is a fascinating thing where um, uh, if you already have a flow and you can introduce a little bit of air into your flow as it goes, then it starts to make uh, an area that has all this compressed air inside of it. And this is something that Bill Mollison advocated yeah. that you have this thing set up and basically with this compressed air, you could drive all kinds of stuff. You could even you know have mm -hmm. a, a vehicle that runs on compressed air. So... I, I had been talking with somebody uh, about having some air power tools on their homestead and how to gen how to how to collect that uh, without using power. And it, so I remember mentioning somebody using a, a, a bicycle powered air pump, uh, you know, like a recumbent cycle, just re refit that so you can lean, you can sit back and pedal um, to pump air into one of these tanks. But yeah, yeah that, the same, same kind of idea. Okay. Sorry. All right. Uh, another question was about, um, 
you all grow a good amount of mushrooms at Wheaton Labs on logs or in other methods. We had a guy here uh, several years ago who did tons of it. Um, and then we've had a couple of people do a couple of bits of it here and there. Um, but hey, Charlie, come on out um, and, and go for it and do it. Um, uh, the, the trick is, is that we have people uh, come and go. And so it's like um, uh, when, when our numbers get low, then, you know, people just spend most of their time doing maintenance stuff and we're not building as much. And when the numbers are high, suddenly there's all kinds of projects happening at once. Um, oh, yeah. Bo did a lot of micro insulation. I was just going to suggest that. Yeah. Which is part of the Low Tech Laboratory movie. Talk a bit. Talk a little about the the mycelium insulation that's going into the pump house. So uh, the pink stuff, your fiberglass insulation, has a value of R three per inch, and the myco insulation, which is basically just wood chips and sawdust and um, mycelium, uh, uh, ends up at about R four per inch, more insulative. And on top of that, I, li I love how Bo does the propane thing where he takes a propane oh, torch dude. and holds it onto a block. There's Bo. Okay. And um, uh, and uh, and he tries to set it on fire and he holds it on there for a really long yeah, time. And that it was awesome. It, won't, <laughs> it was it won't glowing catch. red hot. Yeah. And it didn't burst into flames. And so I kind of feel like we are at the very beginning. And this is like, what a perfect example of the low-tech laboratory. This is the kind of stuff that we do. You can grow your own insulation. And so um, uh, anyway, I hope. So there is there is micro-insulation stuff. There, I mean, there is. Mm. We, we, there are mushrooms for eating being grown. But then, and in fact, I think that uh, uh, the mushrooms that we did now, I think it was with oyster mushrooms. And so that's perfectly edible as well. And so, um, so it could have been like you, grow, you get your crop of uh, mushrooms off of your insulation, wherever you're putting yeah. it. And uh, <laughs> then you eat that and it dries out. And now it insulates your home. Um, it's, it's brilliant. Okay. So we're coming yeah. up on 1130. Yeah. So Hello, the, Uncle Mud. Oh, is Mud here? Yeah. Oh, there he is. God's spray foam. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, so, all right. All right. So last I saw is this, is this it? 75 minutes? Uh, do we have more? Another, so seven more minutes. Okay. All right. So, uh, if we get to 39,481, then six people will get goodies. Um, and it's the six people that have the highest numbers during this. So, like, I don't know. I don't know how many people are putting money in, but if only six people have even put money in, <laughs> I think you're pretty much guaranteed yeah. to get one of the goodies. But um, and then if uh, and I don't know, even if you put in a, a dollar, but I guess if we got in more than a thousand dollars, then OK. So you're, you're thinking too hard about that. <laughs> all right. All right. <laughs> So uh, um, 81 minutes. So what is that? What is somebody needs to do the math to figure out what it takes us to. So 21 minutes. So it'll take us. So we've got 21 minutes past now. Cool. Yeah. So okay. we're going to go to 1151. So 1151 until I hear otherwise. All right. So um, what would what else should we talk about? Is there something else did in there? Wanna, did you want to mention? this topic here. Okay. So the topic that I was going to come in on, and I want to see for all the people that are on here, are there, are there any people here that have ever worked as a farm hand? And, and, and the reason is, is that this is something that I brought up and I shared it with the monthly ish, I think, and uh, asked for all kinds of feedback. In fact, for that particular topic, um, yeah, 123 people gave me thumbs up. I said, thumbs up if this is your experience. And, um, and of course, what I'm asking about is, is if you've worked as a farmhand, and I think that a lot of people have this fantasy like, oh, farmhands get paid $25 an hour. And, um, and then the, the, the work that they're called on, they're taught on the job, how to be a farmhand. And, um, it's, uh, and, the, and, and it's like you never break a sweat. It sounds like their idea of how it goes 
sounds fairly dreamy. Um, so I made this list and I went, I talked, I went item by item with Steven. And so if a farmhand, a brand new farmhand and you, you hired them this morning, they showed up and they, they start work this morning. And, um, uh, first of all, let's talk about farmhand pay. I think, I think, uh, most farmhands get, uh, usually get paid something around minimum wage, uh, maybe a little more, maybe a little less because ag work is a place where you can pay less than minimum wage. Mm -hmm. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, uh, therefore, um, uh, they get, so the pay is very, is much less than what people imagine the pay is. And, um, and I wrote, I made this list of different things and I was trying to, because people kept trying to tell me weird things about the boot camp, like what you put in two months in the boot camp and you didn't get paid a, you know, thousands and thousands of dollars. And I, and it's like, whew. All right. So, uh, I want to break it down and this is an important piece, I think. And it's kind of like, okay, so I wrote that if a farmhand showed up and there's a tree right next to where you stack the wood that that by the end of one let's see one full day to fetch firewood from dead standing cut and stack so i said that at the end of one day a farmhand day, day one clarify. on day one on the first day that the farmhand would put up two cords of firewood and um and at the same time, I'm saying that if a boot in the boot camp was here for two months, that they did get some experience doing that, cutting down trees, limbing it, uh, bucking it, and stacking it, um, that uh, I'm saying that uh, uh, a boot after two months, and they were given the entire day, which is not how we function, but they were given the entire day by themselves to put up firewood, how much would they have at the end of one full day? And I I put down one face cord, and I believe you thought that I'd be lucky to see that. For a brand new, or no, two, 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 months, months, in. In, two months in, somebody working on their own. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd say a face cord would be admirable, most definitely. Would be admirable. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So now let me ask people, um, when it comes to the farmhand, because you, you're going to have, basically, when you hire a farmhand, it's going to be somebody that probably grew up doing this stuff. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and they need some money. So they're going to come work for you for a few months or maybe permanently. But um, a, a farmhand coming in uh, as a permanent hire is probably going to be paid something around minimum wage. And um, I'm saying two cords. Can anybody validate this? Would they, do they think two cords sounds about right? Uh, the next one is, is I put down drive a rig backwards with a trailer. The farmhand would uh, do a real good job. They better do a good job. It's expected that they'll do a great job. Well done. Nice, nice job. Uh, a boot that's been here for two months needs, will we'll do it poorly and they'll need so, more practice. So and I would also say part of this is because while I'm the high commander, I make the rules about driving the rigs around. They don't drive any of our rigs for the first month. I don't know if you knew about that, oh. but, but that's my personal policy. Okay. So the, in the second month, they would that's when they would have their training and their practice. So, yeah, they'll definitely need much more practice. Okay. Um, let's see. One full day of... Uh, logs being put into the ground as fence posts. I'm assuming the logs are already there, but you got to dig a hole. You use your post hole digger, or your auger to take care of it, put oh. the posts in the ground. And then you're going to, you know, fill it in with a little bit of gravel and pack it well yeah, and stuff. Yeah. And I think the farmhand will put in 12 a day and the boot will put in, the farmhand on the first day will put in 12 a day and the boot who's been here for two months will do four a day. And so... Basically, I think the thing I'm trying to do is I'm trying to say like the, the boot camp is um, for people to kind of, uh, well, look at that. What the hell? $2. I'll we'll put in $2 into something here. My fancy pay bling message. 
Oh. Let's, let's celebrate their first super on a live stream. Woo okay. <laughs> right. well, that's kind of cool. So um, I think that there's a lot of people who arrive in the boot camp and they've never held a hammer. They've never held a drill. They've never held a shovel. That's very true. That's very and, true. And we're going to help them get to the point of, I mean, I don't think anybody aspires to someday go be a farmhand for minimum wage. <laughs> yeah. But I do think that it's good to learn how to build your own home, grow your own garden, uh, and put up your own yeah. firewood. Yeah. And there's things a, there's, of that nature. There's a lot of training and just experiential learning that happens uh, with Wheaton Labs. Um, I, I, I love the opportunity to, when somebody's like, I've never... I've never used a sharpening puck before. I've never sharpened a chainsaw. Uh, I've never used a post hole digger. Um, you know, how do you, you know. I've I, never I, driven an excavator. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> or the tractor. I was, I was training a bunch of folks on the tractor not too long ago. So, I mean, yeah. you know, these are all things that, I mean, it's fun for me as the, as the, as the teacher uh, to, to teach them how to do that. But then the idea that they get that kind of experience for the first time ever when they're here. Uh, it's really gratifying to see them like, like, ah, yeah, or like the light bulb goes off on their head and they're like, yeah, man, this, this is, this is, I can do this. I didn't know I could do this kind of thing. So, and that's different from the people who come here and they've never swept the floor. They've never washed their own dishes or made, them, made their own bed or folded their own laundry or something like that. We get that as well in some cases, which, is, which blows my mind, but Hey, you know, <laughs> oh, all right, so we gained a minute. Ra Rachel, it's pretty. It's pretty fun. It's yeah. it's very satisfying to to sharpen that chainsaw. Um, you, you know, and and there are, there are easy ways to do it. With you get a round file, you put a guide on top of it, and it tells you the angle that you should you should be holding it. And yeah, it's and then and then when you take that chainsaw outside and you practice, you know, like you test it, and those big ribbons and chunks of 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 sawn off wood are, are coming out of there you're like yes i did it right and it's so and then you can take that on the job and you can do the job quicker and safer and it's because you knew how to sharpen the chainsaw and you did a great job with it yeah it's very very gratifying to do that sort of thing absolutely so i i kind of feel like um uh i don't know there was a bunch of people just saying really mean things about the boot camp and yeah. it was all like uh um, you know, why would you give your time? Why would, you know, you could go work someplace. You go, basically it was being compared to working yeah. at McDonald's and, uh, <clears throat> I don't know. I mean, and I think a lot of where they were getting hostile had to do with the whole thing about like, uh, people can, can, if they've been here like eight weeks, they can take a, they can attend the PDC for free. And they're kind of like, well, then you're not getting paid much of anything then. And it's like, well, and they're trying to compare it to McDonald's. Like, why not go to McDonald's? And it's kind of like, well, A, if you go to McDonald's and, and do that work, then you got to pay for your apartment and your mm -hmm. food. Because I don't think McDonald's lets you eat. It's, it's not. And well, so while yeah. you're working at McDonald's, Gosh. you got to pay for your wherever your your bunk and your food. And, uh, and then on top of that... Um, uh, now, my understanding is if you work at McDonald's, pretty much you, all of your expenses to exist are pretty much wiped out. And so now I've heard from a lot of people that have been in the boot camp and they say that, you know, they actually accumulate money. Yeah. And a, they do the BRK or something else. Mm -hmm. There's all kinds of different ways. And that they make they, they walked away from here with more money than they arrived. And, and they arrived here after having worked somewhere. So I don't know. Um, all right. So that's the boot camp. Um, ignore the foolish ones. Well, the problem I'm having is that when it comes up on the interwebs, then um, I think that mm -hmm. there, this hostility is discouraging people from joining the boot camp. And it's kind of like, I, I don't like if you go to Harvard for two years, do you get an acre at Harvard? to, you know, build your own, <laughs> plant your own garden and build your own structure. I don't think Harvard does that. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> and you have to pay some huge amount of dollars per year to attend oh. Harvard. Um, so I, yeah, I, so let's see. Oh. 
there was another question. We can come to this about a Wafati. So we'll come to that next. But I had somebody say that the most, like at, I think at the PTJ, somebody said that the most powerful thing that we have here by far is uh, the Willow Feeder and that oh. we need to like make a Willow Feeder movie and put out a bunch of Willow Feeder YouTube videos and make a bunch of Willow Feeder podcasts and things like that. Um, I, oh, and and uh, let me, let, I, I say this to everybody. The, the Willow Feeder technology is a thing that convinced me to stay here long term. I was like, yep, they've, they've addressed that issue. This is a method that is super solid. It uh, doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure it out. Uh, and uh, we have some really nice uh, willow trees that are growing because of it. Um, we are putting it to a use when normally, I was living in Baltimore City, when normally they would just flush that into the, into the bay with a bunch of detergent. I mean, that is inexcusable. That does not work. That is not, that is not a biophilic solution. And, uh, and it's not, and it doesn't help you do even better when you, when you make it happen, you're just like getting rid of it. And those are, re the, the, it's like, you could call it a resource. It's a resource that is just literally being flushed down the drain. So to see that changed here, uh, like I was like, yes, that was the one thing I was worried about. Like, if I have to go take a shit, what's going to happen to it? Do I have to go bury it? No. I'm going to turn it into something to make trees grow. I think that's wonderful. Um, so anyhow, that's where that, that, that was the thing that that was the last box I needed to check for me to stay here. So that's, 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 that, that's what I wanted to say about that topic. Yeah. So for those people asking, basically, um, uh, you know, we don't have a composting toilet. Um, and, uh, this is, this is something that is not a flushing toilet, yeah. uh, um, there's, this is not a human or system. Uh, we have had some people who've come here telling us that we're doing human or all wrong. <laughs> and it's like, this is not human. Yeah, yeah. And so, um, uh, but let's suppose for a moment, because I think in a lot of ways, the natural building that we do so much, of what we do comes from being a gardener. And so it's, it's kind of like, uh, all right, so what is what is the ultimate gardener's path here? And it's like, well, we do need more nitrogen and carbon in our soil, and this is a night this is a source of nitrogen and carbon. Uh, the problem with it is, is we don't want to use it because it it could potentially have pathogens in it. It probably doesn't, but we're not going to take that risk. Mm -hmm. And so, what we do is is we uh, if we age it. For three months, I think you're safe to say it's pathogen free. We age it for two years just to be super duper sure, mm -hmm. and um, and then we put it at the foot of a uh, willow tree in the spring when it's really starting to take off, and the willow tree just sucks all that right up. So it, all that material becomes willow tree. We have more growies here because of the willow feeders. Um, that's that's our system. It's pretty simple. Um, and uh, we should, you know, I don't know if we, I think we could make a movie where it's like uh, willow feeders and mulch pits and gray water systems. Uh -huh. You know, we could do all that stuff. I mean, that's another thing too, is when you have a gray water system, suddenly you really care about what's going down the drain. And if yeah. you do some painting, then it's mm -hmm. kind of like, okay, this is a real challenge now. What do I do with, if I'm going to clean my brush to reuse the brush, where do I clean it? Where do my brush squeezins go? And, and we actually have an answer for that. But, um, but it's kind of like suddenly you really care about what goes down that drain because there's growies on the other side of it. Um, and you also care about what you put into the willow feeder because yeah, well, what you put into your body, which goes into the willow feeder, yes. which goes into the rest of your environment. Yeah, because um, if you eat stuff that's not very good, then it will have persistent herbicides in it, and it will mm -hmm. make that willow tree sad. Yep. And so we don't want that. So, all right. Um, okay, somebody's got to give me an update on how long we go. Yeah. Because uh, 
uh, let's see, in order to be able to hit the $2,000 mark, we need to get to 39,481. And then we can go longer and uh, six people get goodies huh. instead of three. So, um, but we 12, got 12 p.m. tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll do this for a, a it's like we'll call you Jerry Lewis. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll we'll do this. Uh okay, so it's 84 minutes. So that means 24 minutes. We go to eleven fifty-four. So we go for seven more minutes. We have seven more minutes, unless more money goes into the thingamabob. And so um do we need to paste the link in there again, maybe? Just in case. Okay. All right. Um, so again, I'm so happy that y'all have uh, uh, backed this Kickstarter. Oh, it went up. Seven seventy-five. Okay. Okay. So um, somebody quick do the math. Figure it out. Ah. <laughs> uh, um, uh, yeah, Andreas, your idea is working. Way to go, man. I'm glad you brought this up. This is kind of fun. This is kind of nice. So uh, Lisa mentioned, hey, this would be a good movie. And that's when you were talking about the, the Willow Feeders and uh, other things. It's almost like what are the permaculture and or biophilic solutions for typical everyday modern civilization issues? So you've already dealt with heat sufficiently with the, with the other videos you had. Uh, but the, the idea of gray water and like dealing with sewage, the thing that won me over to come here. Do you know if anybody has ever come up with any any sort of explanation for those sort of things, or or if or if you were to do something like that, like say, yep, that's going to be our next Kickstarter. Like, what would that look like? Well, okay, so like if the Kickstarter uh, finishes at like let's say forty thousand, we're all done, and the Kickstarter is done at forty thousand. I think I think it might be a long time until we do another Kickstarter. Hmm. Um, but if the Kickstarter went over a hundred thousand, then I think that we're going to be chomping at the bit to do another Kickstarter, and we'll keep coming out with more products and more products and more products. I mean, when we're running everything on a shoestring, everything comes out slower. And and there was a time when we went two years without a Kickstarter, and so um, I mean, it's it's hard enough to do. Uh, as is. Oh, Uncle Mud says, my mom just backed us. <laughs> nice. So, um, so much of this depends on how much money do we get from this. Yeah. Now, the other thing is, is that there's, it's like if the Kickstarters do really well, then there's other monies that come in in other places. And, and it helps to fund us to do more projects and do more things and take more video, which is another thing is, is that if this Kickstarter goes over a hundred thousand, everybody who's getting paid to be in the video, oh, it went up again. To, who's paying to either be in the video or uh, who's taking the video? The amount of money that they get is much higher, and so it's kind of like, uh, and so then now they're they're more inspired to. Uh, 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 be here for events and and show off mm -hmm. their skills and uh, take video. And so it's like... I believe what you're describing is a virtuous cycle. Sure. Um, <laughs> you know, so um, it, I do think that for Low Tech Laboratory Movie 1, uh, we ended up with very little video, like very little raw video to work with. But I think, you know, we fixed it in post. We added a lot of material afterwards to end up with what I think is a good movie. Um, I think it would have been twice as good if we had a lot more video. And I remember that you had a major push for all the attendees this past year. You were like, please shoot video. We're going to build the incentive into the Kickstarter campaign. And, and we, had, we had probably 10 times, 20 times more raw video to work yeah, with. Yeah. And so... On the other hand, we didn't have as many attendees this year as we had last year. So the builds didn't move, which is why we're having the fall event. And so uh, for an extra five days, people will be here and we'll finish some of these projects. And uh, and that'll go, there'll be video of that that'll go into the movie. 
and again, the deal the deal exists again uh, to, to to do videos. So, um, Poogle culture. Yeah, what? I think that was Ben. He was like, uh, he was talking about. Uh, oh yeah, I was like, I'm going to plant apple trees next to my old Poogle cultures. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, I, I gotta say, so I remember <laughs> the first time I ever saw Joel South, and I was just a doofus in the audience. And uh, he was talking about the problem that they had where they were uh, composting the chicken awful. So the, the you know, the, the innards from the, the leftover chickens, chicken parts. And they would compost them. And <laughs> I raised my hand and I asked this obnoxious question. I said, um, couldn't you feed that to the hogs? And he said, yes, I could. However, I think that my customers wouldn't go that far. I, I think my customers are they're they're willing to go a long ways, but not that far. And so uh, I kind of felt like, and and that could be a big part of why this Kickstarter is not doing a lot better than it already is, and uh, is because I I've gone too far, <laughs> and and <clears throat> it's been pointed out to me that 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 is a, a recurring theme with a lot of my stuff. I've gone too far. And um, so uh, I think that uh, uh, the work that I'm doing appeals to perhaps level five, level six people. It does not appeal to level zero, level one people. They think I'm crazy. And so uh, it has been suggested that we uh, scale it back so it can be appealing to like level one, mm -hmm. level two people. Um, and then it'll be a bigger audience. And it's like, they, they might have a point. And, uh, and I know that Andreas and I have had a talk about uh, what that might be. And Samantha actually kind of started the conversation a bit. So um, about how we might do some of that. Uh, did you want to, the, the, the video idea you wanted, you explained to me. Did so, you want to talk about that now? I, we could. I don't know if that I was mean, something you wanted so, to release so to the public. Basically, it kind of sort of started with um, the secret inner circle forum. And uh, we were talking about what will be future projects. And then uh, somebody said beginning gardening stuff. And I said, yeah, but there's got to be like a thousand, there, hundreds of thousands of like YouTube videos and free content out there for those beginning gardeners. Or how could I possibly turn it into a Kickstarter? And, and this person said, there are not, you know, all the gardening stuff is for people that are already gardeners. And, uh, and I was like, really? Um, so then I kind of threw out the idea of like, okay, if you go to college and take math 101, that would be calculus. You could take math 050 and that'd be algebra. So keeping with that number cycle, what if we had gardening 001? And I was like, what would that be like? And I was like, well, it can't be longer than two minutes. Because I think that if you are at such a level where you've never touched soil and you've never touched seeds, having something longer than two minutes probably would be overwhelming. And so you need something that's two minutes long. And because we don't know where they live, you know, what their climate is, what their soil is, do they even have soil, all of those things, then um, there's too many variables. Plus, you start adding in the thing about what time of year to plant. Um, and it's like, it gets too complicated. So I kind of thought, what we need to do is indoor gardening, something that people can do in their house. And because then you can start at any time of year, and they can all grow the exact same things. Doesn't matter what part of the planet you're in. And we did a bunch of this research already for the skip book. And so I don't know how many of you have actually read the stuff in the skip book, but I don't know. I think we put together some very profound and amazing stuff in the skip book. Like how do you control aphids in a permaculture way instead of an organic way? How are we doing on monies? So over 39 grand. Wow. Nice. 39 and 60. I don't, I, I haven't done the math. Okay. I don't know. There's one that says 92 minutes up there. So that's yeah. going to take us to uh, at least two minutes past noon mountain time. 
And so uh, we've got we've got at least eight minutes. Okay. All right. If you guys if you guys are enjoying this, and I think <laughs> I think that for the Kickstarter, I think that the rewards are already amazing, phenomenal. And and it's like now I did hear somebody say, and I'd love to ha to hear somebody uh, give us uh, uh, more information about this. And Thanks for keeping track for us, Polly. It's appreciated. <laughs> so Andreas was telling me about a friend of his who backed for the low tech laboratory. And so Andreas said, Hey, do you want to back for the low tech laboratory too? And the guy said, I haven't even finished watching the first movie. Mm -hmm. And when I backed, I got so much stuff. I haven't even looked at half of it. And, and he's like, so I'm not going to back this one. And so maybe the thing to do, and I'd love to see feedbacks on this. Maybe the thing to do is if, is that each year we do one Kickstarter that's all digital goods and one that's purely physical goods. But even that, that might be too much for people. But Well, it, again, a lot of the things that, well, no, okay, if it's all physical goods, then... I don't know. That would solve it. Yeah, I'm. I'm not. I'm not sure what the play is here, um, but I. I do want to keep the boot camp moving forward. All of our projects here moving forward, and it's like we build 15 things, and two of them will someday turn into kickstarters, and or or at least some sort of product, and so it's kind of like. Um, uh, how do we keep this moving forward? And, and it's like, we really need. So basically what happened is we did the Kickstarter earlier this year. And then it's like, okay, we've got this much money to put in a well. And, and this was Steven's greatest wish was this well. And, um, and so we did it. And then the bill came yeah. and, and yeah. it's, and it's like, uh, how are we going to do this? Well, we have to do another Kickstarter. That's the only way. And uh, I don't know. I, I I hear of people doing Indiegogo stuff and like, give us money because we want to put in a well. And they get it. How do they get it? I don't know. But here, here's an actual stuff. And I think it's pretty cool stuff. So um, we're going to have to line up another stretch goal if, if it keeps going. Is there something at 40 grand? Yes. Oh. Yes. Maybe we should. There it is. Yeah. Okay. 45. Oh, yeah. That's... All right. Another webinar, dude. Oh, that'd yeah, be the, cool. The live webinar. So it's like this. Yeah. In fact, I kind of feel like this is this is similar to my 72 things, which is on YouTube. 72 bricks to build a better world. Mm -hmm. This is what I think permaculture is uh, in, in a big way. It's, it's um, a, a thousand things to build a better world in your backyard. And... Um, uh, so this is an all new presentation, uh, granted that there are still some things that are similar from the 72 bricks presentation, but it's got a bunch of things that are not in the 72 bricks presentation, but, uh, I, in a way, I kind of feel like this is what the permaculture playing cards are too. Uh, and so mm -hmm. this is the kind of thing that I want to be able to do. Okay. Got to scroll it back up so we can see how we're doing monies wise. 39,060 is what I say. Okay. So um, are we are we still going to finish at... Uh, somebody said 72 bricks was great. Let's yes. See. That's my uh, kind of thing. That's the kind of thing I like to do is 72 bricks. Um, I also like the one that replacing irrigation with permaculture. Um, but, uh, okay, let's see. Where was the last time that they, they added up the minutes? I don't know. Is anybody going to do the math to show us where we're at? That was 92. So we go two minutes. So two minutes further, unless, unless it's, uh, so, so unless somebody else says the math, but you might have to scroll this one down. Yeah. All right, here we go. Uh, Mary had some thoughts. I think at some point the economy will collapse or the electricity grid goes down or the internet disappears. I'm not a fan of streaming. I've been downloading to physical media as part of my preps. Uh -huh. All right. All right, good. So that's another vote for physical media. I don't, know. Don't know about like DVDs coming back, but you can you can store stuff on a portable hard drive or a flash drive or something. When we like were that. up at Idaho, we had the DVDs and we sold a lot of them. We ran out of one of them. We ran out of two of them. We ran out of rocket ovens. We ran out of um, 
uh, the, the the new 40V separate rocket mass heaters, and so um, uh, better wood heat, uh, and so uh, people are still buying DVDs now for the Bermshed movie and for the tour movie. Andreas made both of those available as physical DVDs, and I don't know if he has sold very many. I don't think he has sold very many. And so it's like, okay, that was a lot of work and um, it's not really paying off. So <clears throat> I don't know. Part of me seems to get the impression that people could really use physical DVDs. Yeah. They really like physical DVDs. And at the same time, it's like, um, we're just not really doing it. All right. I think I think uh, unless unless a bunch of money appears in there really fast, I think we're done, um, we, and we have to stop. Is that true? Does anybody want to double check the math? I'm I'm not okay. sitting here doing the math. All right, Lisa, we'll do what we can about figuring out how to post this for to watch later. Yeah, it might just show mm -hmm. up when we're when we're done. Oh, okay. All right. Still buy DVDs. Okay. So I think there's a there's a, a lot of there's a couple different approaches. People are downloading the like the HD download, for example, and then they'll save that to portable hard drive and and watch it whenever they need to. And then there are also people who show up at the events and they're like, Yeah, I've been looking for this. It's right here in front of my face. I may as well just go ahead and do that now. I'll pick up the DVD. Yeah. So right. Some of our stuff is streaming only and mm -hmm. not downloadable. And um and it's kind of like uh, uh, it takes time for us to, you know, go and put it into a downloadable thing and, and whatnot. And then it's kind of like, are we going to put a bunch of time into this to get it available to people as downloadable and then nobody downloads it? So it's always kind of a gamble. Um, so I know that we did a thing, for example, uh, several years ago where we made a jump drive that had all of my YouTube videos, all of my podcasts, and a bunch of other stuff on there too. Wow. And uh, I think it was like 60 bucks. Whoa. Okay. Um, and it took a lot of time to copy everything down to each one. And um, we had a bunch of people, like how many people would pay this money for it? And uh, so a bunch of people did the thumbs up. So we got that many, half that number actually bought uh. it. And so then I was left holding the bag on all the all these extra ones. All right. 110, 110 minutes. Oh, thanks, what, Andreas. What are we at? So what? So like I think six we have more to, minutes. Uh, well, let's see. Um, so sixty leaves uh, fifty minutes, right? So then um, we will go until twenty after, twenty afternoon, right? We'll go to twelve twenty. Okay. Thanks, Andreas. So. Um, now it's currently at 39076. So if it goes up mm -hmm. to 39481, six people instead of three will get those goodies. Maybe we should remind people of what those goodies are. And so uh, six people will have their choice. They'll pick one of these five things one week in a cabin rental here. One hour of consultation with some giant doofus in overalls. The 133 hours, which is the PDC and ATC video. A ticket to the October event, which, which starts in just over a week. But that'll be finishing PTGA projects for one week. And, and I think Uncle Mud's coming out. I'm pretty sure. I, I think I heard that Bo is coming out. Uh, so several of the instructors from the PTJ will be here. And I can pick you up from the airport. And we'll drive in my car and listen to all the music that I want to listen to. Silence. Ask, start a conversation. <laughs> <laughs> um, or if you want, I'll send you uh, one of my books or a deck of the permaculture playing cards. And we're almost out of the playing cards. So, mm -hmm. so we'll see how the... So I know that earlier we were talking about maybe we'll make some more cards. But if the Kickstarter does poorly... I, I don't know. Um, because if, if the idea of having the Kickstarter would be like, because if you get 10,000 decks printed, you can get them printed for like a quarter of the price if you get only 1,000. Like 1,000 or 100 even, yeah. You know, and so it's like we would price them for the, the lower price, but it's like we'd have to say we have to get at least this much to do it. 
and um, yeah, this is this makes it kind of scary. So, um, all right. So, if we hit thirty nine thousand four hundred eighty one, and look, we went up. And That's so, uh, uh, if we hit thirty nine thousand four hundred eighty one, then six people will get to have their pick of those five things. All right. So all right. here are a couple other suggestions you may want to riff off. Uh, if, if you don't want to lose money on USB drives, do pre-order with a deposit. Or what about a prepaid order sale event? You, then you can make just as many as were sold. You know what would so. be great is to find a place that uh, does point of sale. You know, mm -hmm. and then we could put, in fact, um, I, I think the thing to do would be to say, like, we put 12 movies on this 12, 12 movies, a bunch of podcasts, YouTube videos, whatever. It's all on there. Uh, and then um, and then they do a thing where it's like they keep a copy of whatever it is. And then whenever it, uh, they get an order in, then they copy it down and send it out. Yeah, so you know? print on demand. Print on demand. Oh, there you yeah. go. That'd be cool to find something like that. And uh, that way it's like, you know, Put up your money, and then they take care of it, and it happens. Oh, how, how much would you pay me to do that? Oh, I, I don't know. <laughs> you, 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 you tell me. So, um, uh, so Andreas, when you send those, could you also do the math to figure out, like, yeah. we go until what time? So it looks like we gained seven more minutes. Yeah. So we changed this to 1227. Okay. Okay. And so then, uh, and also somebody said, you could sell the cards pre-order with deposit also. So... So again, physical physical oh, objects. Yeah. And then uh, just to, now the cool thing about Kickstarter, and this is something I was really hoping for this year, but it didn't happen. In fact, you guys came through, but uh, it turns out I was wrong. And so I said, everybody make sure to do that notify on launch thing. And so we did lots and lots of notify on launch. And then we got all these people all signed up for notify me on launch. And then the day happened. And then I think like, I don't know, 500 people back to Kickstarter real fast. And it's like, yay, that's going to push us up to the front of Kickstarter for, for you know, several hours. But the thing is, is that there were a whole bunch of other Kickstarters doing the exact same wow. thing. And only they had like 2,000 people in the first three hours. And we only had this measly 500. So we didn't make all those lists. I mean, we, we, we showed up on page three of those lists. Mm -hmm. But I thought we would be we would be at the top of Kickstarter for a few hours. We did, however, get projects we love, which is the second time ever that that's happened, which is very cool. So, we could sell the cards pre-order. We we did a couple of projects where we just we came out with the product, and we said now it's for sale, and hardly anybody bought it, and it was like. Oh, it's like that, is it? So uh, that's a bummer. <laughs> that's that's a drag. So, um, oh, and and I remember uh, we have not had it. We have on this Kickstarter, we have not had a single person say, "Will you stop spamming me?" But on previous Kickstarters, we would have one or two people who that's would true. say that, and and it's kind of like, um, you think I like sending all these emails? <laughs> Oh, what I like is the idea of I come out with a product and then, you know, 2,000 people just buy it in the first 24 hours and we're done. <laughs> That's great. I don't have to do Kickstarter or nothing. But it turns out, and I and I really thought it was great to hear from um, Jennifer and Josiah. Uh, and, uh, uh, and so they supported a Kickstarter and both of them supported it when there was just minutes to go. And the whole Kickstarter, and they had been ignoring all the emails. Oh, and so then, it was waiting then, until the last minute, like proverbial last minute. And so here comes yeah. something that says there's six hours left in the Kickstarter, and so they're like, oh, I guess I better go look because this this email's already five hours old or whatever it was. <laughs> so they they come out and there's just like thirty minutes left or ten minutes wow. left or something like wow. that, and they both backed and um, and at the time we were doing tickets to our summer events. So they both came out, and um, and they met. This was oh before they even were together, 
Right. Oh my God. Right. They were just coming and they met here. <laughs> <clears throat> and they okay. were both wow. here for two years. Yeah. And I think it I took didn't... six months until they got all lovey dovey. But they both they both decided to join the boot camp after the events because there was this other person that was here that they were kind of keen yeah, on. Yeah, okay. But they didn't have what it takes to say, hey baby, or whatever. And so um oh, it ends for now at 12 27. Thank you, Andreas. So uh no. Uh, Josiah took on the greenhouse project. He finished the greenhouse project. It's beautiful. And then while they were here, um, uh, 500 acres fell into Jennifer's lap. Yeah. And uh, and then they got married. And now they have a baby. And they're on the 500 acres. <laughs> and so, um, uh, but the key is, is that... Um, <laughs> If we don't send out like 50 emails, yeah, yeah. then Jennifer and I would have never met. <laughs> Therefore. But, but it's also like this thing where it's like, um, you know, I, it's it's like every time we send out an email, we get a bunch more people that back the Kickstarter. Mm. And it's like, and it just keeps going. So it's like, why didn't we just get 2,000 people on day one and then we could just call it good? So... Human brains don't work that way. Apparently, apparently, <laughs> it's a lot of work. And then we could just. And the other thing is, we could just take the exact same email, just send out the exact same email forty times, but nobody wants that either. <laughs> and so uh, everybody wants a, a, a custom made email every time. So it is a tremendous amount of work. It is just yeah, amazing. yeah. It's it's just a phenomenal amount of work. So we're doing it though. And uh, um, I, because I am psychotic about, and I, and I believe, I believe that this project, this project is the thing that's going to take everything else global. Like, like it's going to bring us a thousand times more interest. It might be this year. It might be next year. It might be the year after that. But it's like this is my the best thing I can come up with to try to have global because I and that was the other thing I sent an email about out to the monthly ish like uh, three or four weeks ago was I said I believe that the Better World book if it was read by a hundred million people would solve most global problems. Click on the thumbs up if you agree with this, and it got two hundred and some thumbs up, which is pretty good for a post. I mean, granted. Mm -hmm. The thread probably got ten thousand. I'm and and it drives me absolutely bonkers when people are like, uh, "There's nothing we can do. We're all going to die from climate mm. change," and it's like, I have a whole book listing stuff that you can do, and um, you know, and they can't hear the things like. In fact, here's a thing. Here's a funny thing, and this is just it's gone around the internet. So a lot of you have probably. Or this, but you can't type it. You can't type it. So I'm going to say a thing. In fact, I don't know if I even tried this on you. What does E Y E spell? The word I. Oh shit! I already fucked it up. I already fucked it up. I'm supposed to say what does Y E S spell? <laughs> and you say yes. And then what does E Y E S spell? And then everybody goes e oh, no. yes. <laughs> and so. <laughs> I fucked it up. I fucked it up. Oh. It's been a long day. <laughs> Damn it. Damn it. Okay. There are a couple of things that have been put here. Okay. Um, uh, hey, uh, you can't please everyone. I appreciate the updates. Someone mentions here, don't tell him, but, if, but I have found out and I backed his Kickstarters after I got the Kickstarter email. Hey, so it does work. And <laughs> have you guys grown sweet potatoes up there? No, no, not yet. Mm. Although we talked about it just like three days ago. Mm. Yeah. And, and it's kind of like, um, there's so much stuff I want to grow here, but I've spent all my time gardening gardeners and, and it's like, um, but I do think though, and this hey, is hey, what, hey, you know, Hey, we have a well now. I do think that <laughs> we're building soil so much more this mm -hmm. year than yeah. in previous years. Mm-hmm. 
And the water, uh, and the so water you, was a tremendous help to that. Yeah. yeah. And now you can just go ahead and sneeze some seeds <laughs> on those hula culture and you'll have instant garden. But uh, uh, we've got plans to grow sweet potatoes. Um, but uh, uh, yeah. So um, can I talk about wafadis? Um, oh, Samantha says sweet potatoes are growing on my hugel bed and she's only slightly warmer than us. Mm -hmm. So yes, yeah. it when can I, be done. When I move to my acre plot um, next year, I'm going to be, uh, sweet potatoes are one of the crops that I want to grow. Okay. So. Uh, wafadis. So looks like a cabin on the inside, but with a lot more glass. And I hope to make it so that it's cheaper to build than, cheaper and faster to build than a conventional stick-built home. Um, and that it comes with the side effect of carrying the heat through the summer to heat the home through the winter. Uh, we're doing, uh, we've done some annualized thermal inertia tests in the past, but I like the idea of like, uh, can we come up with, well, there's all kinds of things to do to do it better, to really do the test better. And um, we got to get video. We got to get, um, there's all kinds of stuff we need to do, 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 do. And then we could, we, um, and then there's interest in a, a Wafati movie and a Wafati book. Interest in a Wafati book sounds like it's bigger than the Wafati movie. But um, uh, I don't know. It's, it's like, uh, so Julia has volunteered to uh, stay in Outer Abbey and do some more annualized from the inertia tests mm -hmm. this year. I know that while she's been away this week that um, uh, Jeff has been going up there and doing things to help uh, maintain a lot of uh, heat and warmth up there. Uh, because basically it's like, okay, if somebody lives in this year round, will it hold room temperature heat year round? And um we have yet to really properly do that test. Mm -hmm. But I kind of feel like um, uh, I, I know that uh, Cheryl was here and she put in a bunch of uh, window quilts. And I kind of feel like I want to do the, the triple quilt idea, like what we're doing on that one window here where we've got two window shades that are kind of insulative uh, with a window quilt on the outside. Um, and I want to do that for all the windows there. And I kind of wonder if maybe we should do the mycelium insulation on the ceiling of uh, um, Allerton Abbey. And so do these things to kind of really help give a boost to uh, the annualized thermal inertia test. Plus, I kind of feel like, you know, there's still, still some stuff to be planted on the roof of Allerton Abbey that we haven't done yet. So there's just a lot more to be done. Um, let me ask you the oh. let me ask you all the question. If I have a Wafati event, will um, I don't know eight of you come out for it, and we'll work on building Wafatis for a week or two, uh, and getting these things done. I mean, or another thing is is like uh, uh, if there's fifty two weeks in a year, can I get fifty two people to rent the Wafati for a week at a time to you know test it out? Um, so uh, I think. Oh, micro insulation shutters. Interesting. Okay. So, uh, uh, Andreas earlier said we go to 1227. I don't know if we've gotten more money uh, since then. I think we have. Yeah. We are $228 away from three more people getting goodies. So, um, it does seem like if somebody put in $228, they'll probably get to pick one of those goodies which would be, I don't know, how much is the rent for the, uh, if it, so we said to one of our cabins, so if somebody picked Cooper Cabin, uh, what would one week of Cooper Cabin be? It'd probably be $300, I would guess. At least. At least, yeah. yeah. You know, that's a big building. Um, yeah, I, I okay. would. Ju Judy Wolfati, think of it as an acronym. Woodland. Uh, woodland, the place where you're going to be building it because you're going to be using the materials around you. you need the logs. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, you need the logs from the woodland. Yeah. Okay. O is Mike Ayler inspired. Starts with an O. So so the guy who did the $50 and, uh, and up uh, underground house book is Mike Ayler. He, he wrote that. 
Paul's in like a like a I don't know. It's like Mike was his uh, and, and mentor. Yeah, yeah, it was a good friend of his. Okay, F means freaky cheap. Yeah, you're not going to have to spend much because you're getting all of your materials from the land around where you're going to be building it. ATI stands for annualized thermal inertia, uh, and that's basically you're using the earth itself to absorb the heat during the warm time of the year, and it will release the heat into that living space during the cold time of the year. How bad am I at that? No, no, you got it. You nailed it. You okay. nailed it. I think the big thing is, is most natural buildings cost more than conventional stick built homes. And this will be the first time that we've come up with a natural building that is cheaper. Yeah. And so, um, and, but we've, you know, I mean, is it going to take 20 years for it to catch on? But we're, first of all, we've got to, we got to kind of get things well tested and finished and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And, and I think we got to get to the point where we build something like uh, seven of them and we get lots of video and, and lots of good tests, but also being able to build it quickly enough that it's clearly faster to build yeah. than conventional. But on the other hand, and this is where it gets very, very, very frustrating. And that is that um, it, it currently... Um, like rocket mass heaters are way better than any other wood stove, far better. And uh, they're, they're cheaper, they're faster to build, they use less wood, so it's less you know, screwing with it to get it to heat your home. It's just better in so many ways. And yet it's like pulling teeth to, to talk to people about it. And, and it's like it's going nowhere. So it's like... We'll put all this time into building a Wafati only to have it ignored also. Like, like the Wafati can do all of the things and be absolutely mm -hmm. dreamy and magical, and it will also be ignored. I, that's my worry right now. And and look, this this could be my poorest performing Kickstarter ever. And so this is the talk about discouraging. All, and that's why I was trying to say the thing earlier. This may be very, very discouraging, and yet I don't think I can ever be discouraged from doing this stuff. I'll just be slowed down. So, yeah, three minutes left. If people don't go and up their backer level or uh, whatever, and we just have a little ways more to go so that three more people can get bonus candy, and then we can keep talking about all this stuff. So uh, three minutes left. So we go to 1228. Our thing says 1224. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. <laughs> Your tiny-ass clock over there says yeah. 1225. Well, that one's, that one's spot-on accurate. This one is, I think, about 30 seconds behind. So, But, but still, um, uh, yeah, just go. a few minutes left. I want to combine a Wafati with a storm or air raid shelter. The concrete for the bunker would be the thermal mass for the greenhouse as well. I don't want to use any concrete ever. And so um, all the Wafatis we built have zero concrete. And the uh, the greenhouse Wafati has zero concrete. The berm sheds have zero concrete. Uh, so I want to discourage people from using concrete. And so I think that there could be a time and a place where you got to have some portland cement or some concrete or something like that but it's like i want to come up with designs so that we don't need that we don't need mm -hmm. to have any and um uh there's uh a bunch of reasons so i want to point out that i think that the dollars on the kickstarter hasn't budged and so i guess we're going to stop here in a couple of minutes um and, uh, and only three people will get goodies. But if it goes up in the next three minutes, then uh, enough, then uh, we'll go a little longer, which might be enough so that three more people will get goodies. So uh, uh, we got to get to $39,481. Mm -hmm. And we're currently at 39190 So if we can get to 39481 six okay. people get uh, goodie packages instead of three. So here is here's a question for the last couple minutes. Then, so you talked about concrete, which is chemically crazy, and it's also labor and energy intensive to create. 
It, so the challenge here then is then come up with a design that would do the functional job of concrete. So instead of using concrete, what are what, cob? We use we use cob a lot, and um, and pretty much any place that you would use concrete, you can use cob or adobe, and uh, it works great. The only trick is, of course, you have to keep it dry. Um, oh, it went up. Somebody put monies in. So we're going to go longer. Um, the, the, uh, uh, I, I, but, the, but on top of that, it's kind of like, okay, well, where are you using the okay. concrete and how can we do better? So than it that? says needs to be, needs at least three feet to stop radiation. It needs to be underground. So think, okay. Oh, I've got a great answer for this. Okay. Um, so on permies.com, we have uh, Mike Ehlers' books plus his um, the streaming version of his DVDs, his workshop, and um, uh, the second, and I think, and I th I talked them into going down to thirty five dollars, whereas they wanted it to be a hundred dollars, and so I feel pretty proud of making it available so cheap, <laughs> um, but it, so it's available on Permies, and. Um, uh, movie number two has a bunch of fascinating stuff about roof design for an ailer structure, which a wolf body basically is 80% an ailer structure. So a lot of really excellent information there for your designs to have um, uh, uh, for the roof design. For how you're gonna because that's the tricky part. That's the thing you gotta really have down great, and that really covers it. But the third movie is all about how to protect yourself from radiations. And so uh, all of it, the whole third movie, that's all it talks about is, you know, all the different kinds of bits and bobs you need to do. Okay. Uh, uh, we need to get to 39,481 and it's currently at 275. So it's like $200 shy of being able to make it mm -hmm. so that three more people get a get big goodies. Uh, three more people can come out here and, and stay in one of our cabins for a week. Right. Um, so there was, a, there was a comment down here about Roman concrete used by Romans made with volcanic ash and seawater, among other stuff. Right. And so apparently it gets a higher, it, it becomes a higher quality as the centuries pass. And um, I mean, my understanding is it still takes a lot of uh, fuel to make it. A lot of heat has to get in it. Okay, 1234 is our new, so we're going to 1234. Okay. All right. And if you Thank wanted you, to Chris. switch topics, we can go to, to Roundwood Joinery. Like with the Great Barber. <laughs> yeah, Bo, uh. Bo did our Great Barber. That was amazing. And so we had two posts. That were already in place and fixed. And it's like, well, if we can add one log going all the way across, then it could be as, as a grape arbor. And so basically what we needed, what we wanted to do is like, can we do this without any metal or glue? Uh, because if you can do it without any metal or glue, you get extra points on going to Woodworkers Valhalla when you die. And it's like, so uh, plus it's just a soul building thing when you pull it off. And so um, we started off with some really stupid ideas and some shitty ideas. And then um, we went through lots and lots and lots of different things. And then what Bo ended up with, I thought was just brilliant. He came up with a way to make the log slide in and then slide down. And it had a had dovetail joints on the end. So it was a dovetail slide in. So it goes boom, boom. And of course he did it, you know, one side and then the other side, but. You know, still, uh, that's in this movie. And so, uh, uh, in fact, the cool thing is, is that Bo did a, did a thing um, uh, where uh, he made a, 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 a model. He had two sticks uh -huh. of wood, and it's like it would go like this, slide in and down. And it worked. And it's beautiful. It's great. Um, uh, if we, to follow up with it, we're putting plants in it um, uh, in the next in the next couple like in the next couple months, even. I mean, we're going to actually know because in, in at the event, someone's going to be bringing grape vines for us to put in there. Hopefully, they'll overwinter, and then we'll have okay. uh, grapes growing next spring. Awesome, awesome. 
Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 We're gonna need uh, big grapes to uh, to knock that thing down because Bo did an awesome job with it. Yeah, and, that and... thing should last a long time. Uh, that's pretty pretty beefy wood there. Um, yeah, the slide in dovetail yeah. that was pretty cool. That was pretty amazing. Um, okay, it says thirty nine thousand three hundred and forty. So we have three minutes right now, according to the last time check. And so, uh, yeah, we've got like three minutes to go or so. And uh, at the same time, if we got like $140, three more people would get to come out here uh, uh, the next year. So, um, oh, now go to 1238 because and, money came in. And, and Corey uh, gave you a shout out. Corey has been subscribed for years. Just wanted to say thanks for all you do. Oh, ah, thanks for the kind words, Corey. It really kind of helps. So whenever I have a dark day and then somebody says a nice thing, that's that really kind of pulls me out of my funk. Um, and uh, I can get a lot more done that day. Um, so uh, uh, and there's there's you know, there's unkindness. You know, the cool thing is, is that we used to get unkindness or I used to get unkindness like generally several times a week maybe maybe five or six times a week but now it's more like once or twice a month and so uh, not getting near the unkindness I used to get and um, uh, and and I I put it to everybody if there's if I've ever been a naughty boy say so in the chat right now name the naughty the only naughty that I it seems like anybody ever comes up with is like I told Paul to be my personal bitch and he wouldn't do it so He's a fucking idiot and an asshole. And it's kind of like, that's kind of it. <laughs> and I kind of feel like I'm glad to be guilty of that. Um, and, uh, but I don't know. I, there's, there's all these people who seem to perpetually hate me. And it's like, why? What did I do? What is the thing that I've done that's so horrendous? You and your poison ideas, Paul. Every time. I, I kind of feel like I've done some powerful epic shit and uh, and we're making a big difference. We're, we're, we're changing a lot of stuff. And it's like, this has been silly, really. How much, uh, uh, you know, everything's, every last thing has been either a major exaggeration or complete fiction. Uh -huh. And uh, I saw... Somebody on the internet, somebody pointed at something out. Go look at this. And this guy was saying, like, oh, Paul Wheaton's got, like, $18 million. And it's like, uh, I do? Where <laughs> is it? Ah, oh, is it under the couch cushions? <laughs> you know? It's like, uh, I, this, the, the, this, this misinformation is bizarre. And so I'm guilty of these things that I've never even heard of. I mean, I... I'm not exactly guilty of having $18 million. That would be delightful. Um, I mean, here I am freaking out, and we, you know, about 40000 In fact, okay, so we go to, four, we go four more minutes. And, and let's shift gears. Somebody was asking about the skip book. Without doing any research on my part because I'm lazy, is there a simple list I can find that just has everything, like in an Excel sheet? Good question. First of all, if you go to permies.com slash skip, you will get all of the information you need it's all free and and it's like the, ha, there's no point in there being a book unless you just like to i don't know sit in the woods and read uh, hey, there's, there's nothing wrong with that yeah no it, it, it's like uh, <laughs> uh everybody wants the book and you don't have to have the book it's all available for free um and uh, uh, as far as a spreadsheet, I believe that somebody made a spreadsheet for like a dollar. That was true. Or something it's, like it's that. It's also available on the Permies website. Yeah. So, yes, yeah, somebody did do that, and they can help you plan out. It's like they're, uh, they're sort of like progressive ones. So, But I think there's also an app. Yeah. Did Ash Jackson make the app, I think? Uh, and he was on here earlier. Yeah, he said he had to roll out. But, okay. And then old Henry mentions, yes, there's a spreadsheet skip tracker. So, okay. yeah. All right. Yeah, it's a All way right. for you to help figure out which ones you need for your sand badge or or whatever, you know, whatever you're going towards next. My $18 million is being spent on the expensive designer overalls I wear. Uh, oh, uh, Ash's pep badge trackers are pretty great. Cool. All right. All right. All right. So uh, one more minute. Ah! Wow. So 
Uh, it says over here 39375 So it's about $100 shy of three more people getting goodies. And so, um, and we've got like just a couple minutes left. All right. Well, here, look at this. Uh, Old Henry mentions Trello project for Skip. So we use Trello for something in-house. Did you want to mention that at all to the world at large? So Jocelyn got us going on Trello years ago. So the abyss is on Trello. And so it's the list of all of the things we want to get done. And um, it's priority one through priority 10. Although we did make a list called priority zero. And these are the things yeah. where uh, our hair is on fire. Um, uh, it's embarrassing that it's that way right now. Uh, or it's part of the Allerton Abbey project and it needs to be finished immediately. Um, and so all of our stuff that's like, you know, we got to do it like sooner than priority one. Um, how much to hit next? Give me Six, goal. $625. So it says... 39375 yeah. and we got to go to 39481 so a little over $100 oh, oh i meant okay so Isn't the 6 right? so the 620 25 i put in was for meeting the stretch goal the 40 grand stretch goal oh okay that's, maybe that's I what I, that's what i that's what that's for oh okay. when you said gimme i was thinking that was the level in the kickstarter if you're not talking about the kickstarter thing then then uh yeah we need even less than that Okay, uh, so there's one minute 100, left. A hundred and six dollars to reach the next thousand, the next thousand dollar mark for the for this the, thing for the, the and then three more people will get goodies, and so um, yeah. Sorry, yeah, sorry, Bo. I apologize. So Sounds we have, on me. We have one minute left, and so if somebody puts in fifteen bucks, that'll buy us. I don't know another minute. I guess is that how it works. Um, and so, oh, we're down to the, down to ticking off the seconds. Let's see, so it says, says 39,375 <laughs> right now. We need to get to 39,481 in order to give out um, uh, the, the, oh, it, it just went up $106. It did? No, I said, it said, oh, it, oh, oh. It's Andreas saying it. <laughs> Let's see. Okay, so you're refreshing it. Yeah. <laughs> In case our updater thing isn't updating very yeah. good, it might it might uh, take its time. Oh man, even the you know something's going super slow. Oh, it did go up. Yeah, Look at that. Crikey. Oh, we went over. So three more people, three more people get to have uh, the goodies, and so um, uh, we'll. And so this is this is going out to so whoever are the top backers during this time frame that we're doing this event then uh they get to have um uh one of five things and the top item is to come spend a week here i'm going to suggest that if you come and stay in one of our cabins for a week come during the winter because then you can really get the feel of a rocket mass heater um but you can come anytime in the next year uh, so six people now get to do that. And it's the top six people, the top. So of all the backers that have backed during this last two hours or whatever it is, mm -hmm. then um, uh, they will get to choose one item from the list of five. So it's not a random thing. It's whoever's put in the most coin during not. It's whoever has the, the largest Final coin. So if or, if somebody already backed at a thousand dollars, which somebody did, and they add one dollar during this event, I think they're pretty much guaranteed their pick. Yeah. You know, that they're on the list. <coughs> red cabin. <coughs> yeah. Probably want to do the red cabin, especially in the winter. In, yeah. If you're going awesome. to do the, do the um, because during the winter between Thanksgiving and March twentieth. We have two half-assed holidays per week. Mm -hmm. So if you come for a week, it's going to have... And then plus, I think it would be lovely to have people here for Christmas and or Thanksgiving. Um, I, I think it would be terrific to have some bonus people. Keep in mind that I don't know how to cook. <laughs> and so I'm counting on people who know how to cook to be here. Um, if you are here for a couple of the... Uh, we have Prenicky Day and... 
uh, Roundwood Furniture Day for sure. I cook lumberjack breakfast for dinner or for those holidays. So just keep keep that in mind. So um, and, and I do a pretty darn good job at it. Oh wow, it's it, gone. It's it's rocking it up now. It's gone past. Okay, what's the next topic? Um let's see. A book in your hands. Um, no I'm, one has oh, yeah. listed anything where I've been naughty ever. And so I, 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 I think that this is proving that I am a delightful person 100% of the time. And, and I have to answer this because I spit it out. What's a lumberjack breakfast for dinner? <laughs> lumberjack breakfast is scrambled eggs, uh, sausage links. Um, gosh, uh, we make pancakes. pancakes. Yeah. And I, and I also make buckwheat pancakes as well as regular pancakes. And I'm vegan, so I make vegan buckwheat pancakes. So... And before before you ask, I'm 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 a pretty darn good cook, so I can scramble eggs and I make sausage and even I have, you don't eat them. And even though I don't eat them, I just I just know this. Um, I had I I did it several times last uh, this this last uh, holiday season. So yeah, oh 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 the word idiot is rude. <laughs> I got some more words to teach your kids, Bob. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, let's see. Runwood, Runwood Day and Pranky Day with lumberjack breakfast for dinner sounds epic. You took the words right out of my mouth. Yeah, yeah. Um, that those are the days that we're making those chairs. Um, I made my first ever stool without using, and stool isn't a piece of furniture. <laughs> without without Thanks, using yeah, with, without using power tools, um, and it's fantastic. Again, it's like a. It's a chance to use skills that you never thought you would have a chance to ever use. And and you have something to show for it afterward. I mean, right now that stool is in, it's in the solarium. 12.56. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it's a piece of furniture that people are using uh, whenever they stay in the solarium. It's awesome. You know, um, and then. Yeah, well, so so we'll be building our furniture, or you know, on repair cafe day, we'll be fixing stuff, and then we come in and have our meal afterward, and talk about what we've, uh, what we would have done, you know, what we did that day. So uh, when we get to uh, that period of time between uh, thanks between December the tenth and Christmas Day, most of our half-assed holidays are Christmas based. And uh, usually feature uh, one hour uh, during boot time as mandatory watch a Christmas movie time. And so we watched some good Christmas movies last year. And uh, Die Hard. Yeah, Die, Die Hard was on the list. We and and once we did once we made that turn to Die Hard, there were a couple other movies we watched maybe around like New Year's that had absolutely nothing to do with Christmas holidays. Um, we're not doing a, a Groundhog Day this year because it's during the Garden Master Course. Ah, all right, okay. But but last year, of course, when you when it's Groundhog Day, you have to watch the Groundhog Day movie. Yep. And we had uh, donuts and pastries for dinner. Yeah, that was awesome. Because that's what awesome. they eat in the movie, and then we have to play yeah. that song over and over and over again. That that I got you, babe. Song is yeah, played yeah, over and played, over again. Yeah, we played that all day. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, yes, a few years ago, late October, we watched Hocus Pocus. Yes. And so, um, so usually, I don't know, last night I, we watched, uh, we watched Andor. We watched, I, I thought Andor was a good show. Um, I, I've been, um, he sucked me into watching Andor. For the record, I don't watch any Disney stuff. I don't watch any superhero movie stuff. So. And I don't watch any Star Wars stuff. So, like, not only is it Disney, but it's Star Wars, and Andor is very good. I am very impressed. We made it through episode number five or six. Something like that. And um, it's tremendous, but I don't know if we're here to talk about Andor. We're not. Just the fact that you pulled the rug out from under me. And but I'm all I'm saying is, is that we have these lovely holidays, <laughs> and we do things, and we do things regularly, too, but... Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, but at the same time, I think the half-assed holidays have been really terrific. And so I, I really hope that we do, you know, wow. but, but if we have more people here, that'd be terrific to have more people here during the half-assed holidays. That's all I'm saying. So Mary, that's tremendous. That shows a huge amount of planning to take care of your cattle. 
So thumbs up to you. That sounds wonderful. That's wild. Um, oh, great, and uh, Bo's talking about how Des and I were watching Disco. It got lame. We we stopped watching it, and so I don't know how it ends. And we we just turned it off. Yeah. I thought Star Trek Disco was a dance, and that could be that too. <laughs> it's a sh it's a show. Oh, it's based on a show. Yeah. Okay. All right. Sorry, sorry. Did, yeah, didn't know they had a new. I saw that, and I was like, "Oh, maybe he watched so, you guys dancing around." I don't know. Or something. It seemed like once a week or so, Des and I were watching this 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 show, and uh, and then it was fine. Yeah. It was good. I, I was really enjoying it, and then it kind of became lame. It mm. became, became really lame, so we just turned it off. Yeah, that's a bummer. Yeah, yeah, but you know, I don't know. We watch shows here once in a while. Um, not every night, but uh, I don't know, every third night usually there's something. We get together, we all pile up in here and watch something. But on on the half-assed holidays, which is how we got to talking about that, mm -hmm. the, the funny thing is, is that during the boot day, we'll have mandatory Christmas movie. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's, yeah, that's a, like we have a day that's called Christmas cookie day. So we make a bunch of Christmas cookies for a couple of hours, okay. and we all pile in here and watch a Christmas movie. Yep. So... Um, and we watched Elf. We watched. That's the only one I remember. Claws. Thank you. Yeah, Claws was good. Yeah, it that was, was that was well done. Yeah, I was impressed with that. Yeah, Claws and Elf, Die Hard. <laughs> yeah, Julia <laughs> watched Die Hard with us, and she actually liked it, <laughs> which is funny. So Julia has uh, she's she's like watched maybe four movies in all of her life, mm -hmm. and. Uh, the idea of something violent is not very appealing, well, but she she helped us watch it anyway. And and what was the series she's been watching with you? Oh, uh, boy, I don't even remember now. Sorry, it's okay. Well, I, I, but she had to stop for a while for some reason. Oh wait, it was the Mandalorian. Okay, all right. And we but we finished it. We got all done. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So. Uh, um, but that's got a lot of violence in it. So, um, all right. We go to 12.56. It's 12.48. Uh, hang, hang on, hang on. Oh. Tired of talking about stupid shows. We just gained 40 acres of timber. Is that is that what that says? 40 acres of timber wheat uh, Wheat fields. Something what wheat, something wheat fields. What would the do first? What is it? It's cut off. Just, okay, so if it's 40 acres of timber, Timber wheat fields. Oh no, of tired, tired wheat fields. Thank you. Oh, there okay. you go. I had to. I, sorry, sorry, Bo. I had to move the. Move it was the thing. hiding the last word. Okay, of tired wheat fields. <sighs> sorry, man. Sorry. Okay. Um. So I'm I'm assuming that there's like a house there. Are you living there? Is this this is this is a forty acres flat. And it's um, uh, it's got a house. You're gonna live on the house. So here is here is what I would. And it's just just one family. It's not like there's seven families on this. This is just one family, right? Am I close? Okay, adjacent. All right. Um, <clears throat> first of all. I would have to say that I would um, I would want to fence it, which is going to be so much work and such Eric, a bunch you. of expense. Is it already fenced by any chance? Um, so, uh, but the the big thing that I suggest. So, for example, I'm going to say a thing. In my uh, replacing irrigation with permaculture presentation, there's a slide where it shows the exact same patch of ground. On the left, it's cracked clay. And on the right, it's weeds that are like eight inches tall. And um, and so the guy that, that did that, he called me up and he said, I'm going to recommend that they grow alfalfa. And I'm first of all, I'm thinking like, okay, you'll get the alfalfa to grow eventually, but it's going to take a lot of love for a lot of years to get it to grow. But then you're doing the same problem that happened before. A crop would grow up and they'd cut the crop and take it away. So this organic matter was generated above ground and then they would take the organic matter away. And part of what they said was, is that they have a large house there and there's a guy living there that's like a yoga dude. 
who's a very famous yoga dude. And um, and people will come there from all over the world to, to hang out with the yoga dude. And so the thing I said is, is that you want to grow some glorious and magnificent gardens and feed people there and then charge people to stay there for uh, a night or two or a week or two or whatever, and they can eat the food that you grow there and charge them too much to stay. So kind of Airbnb-esque, but, you know, leave Airbnb out of it probably. Just, you know, people that are interested in visiting with the yoga dude. Um, and the thing is, is that the food that you'd provide would be glorious and magnificent, and you would transform this land, but you would expand it like a quarter of an acre a year, maybe as much as an acre a year, and it would go out further and further and further. So you would have these gardens, which would slowly expand into this 40 acres. And so, um, and because it's uh, a wheat field, I'm guessing it's flat. And, and so because it's flat, then there's probably wind. And because there's wind, I'm thinking, berms. And if there's no fence around the border, which is what it says over there, I think I think the first thing I would want to do would be to put in a big ass berm around the outside. So go and rent a giant excavator for a week. Um, so uh, then once those big berms are, you can plant those berms with all kinds of fun stuff. Uh, and you can even plant a short you can put in a short fence on the top edge of the berm because you don't have to make the fence very big if the animals are all downhill of your fence. So um, uh, now, yes, feeling bermy. That's that's how you want to feel. And then on the interior, you can put in a bunch of hugel cultures yeah. as the years pass. And I would ignore uh, 39 acres the first year. Um, and then, you know, put in the berm as early as you can and then start putting in all these hookah cultures year after year. So by the time you get to year 10, your first hookah culture is now 10 years old. The soil has become really rich. The food coming out of it is immense. And then, you know, you've now got perhaps six acres of hugel culture uh, gardens. You've got so much food that um, it's going to be far, far more than your family can eat. And so hopefully you'll start opening up some channels to sell some of it on the side. And because it's permaculture, polyculture food, maybe you'll get a great price for it instead of selling it at commodity prices. But you're, you're now well on your way to gertitude. All right. Follow the 39 or go for livestock on those 39 acres? <clears throat> I'd say... Once you have a fence up on the perimeter, then uh, what you really want to do is start doing some paddock shift and start building that soil. So when the time comes that you're going to go out there and you're going to build some hugel cultures, you're going to be working with much better soil. Now, it's tired wheat field, which sounds like there's not a lot of um, uh, wood out there to work with. So what's going to be a type of wood that will grow crazy fast that'll go well inside of your hugel culture probably some kind of poplar and um and so you're going to grow this poplar up nice and big and then when you make your next hugel culture you're going to grab some of the poplar um yeah low stocking density until it gains fertility absolutely correct but if you're going to do paddock shift systems, you'll be amazed at how quickly you gain fertility. It'll be wonderful and delightful. Okay. we Do we have one minute left or are we still going wow. further? Two minutes left and almost at three hours. Mission accomplished. Oh, Dude, Andres, thank wow. you for keeping track of, okay. of this. Let's just go to the end of the three hours. Six <laughs> people get goodies. Um, I'm sure soon somebody will figure out who those six are. Uh, maybe that somebody will be me. But um, uh, four minutes left. My bladder says we're definitely done. <laughs> but we actually started like a half hour early as we were trying to figure out how to make yeah, this thing work. We've just been chit-chatting all day long. Yeah, three and a <laughs> half hours. So so here's, here's something you may want to comment about. Uh, Mary comments here, I would hunt around for sources of free or cheap organic material to spread on the land. 
if you can get wood chip from your utility company and plant cover crops to crimp or roll what would be your what would be your caution for i would be very cautious about wood chips um uh, a lot of times uh, the wood chips are going to come from an urban lot where somebody used persistent herbicides mm -hmm. and uh, they, re they, they did not know the persistent herbicides uh, will kill anything that is not grass. And, um, and, and they will say this tree died for no reason and they forgot that a tree is not grass. And, and so then the tree basically got poisoned by the persistent herbicides. So now the tree mm -hmm. took up these persistent herbicides. The tree is now loaded with persistent herbicides. And then you go and you put that on your garden and your garden dies. You are now sad. And so the only time I would ever use wood chips is if I know where it came from, mm -hmm. and, or at least I know enough that it very probably has no persistent herbicides. Um, so I I wouldn't use wood chips willy nilly from any source. I'd be very very careful. Now, growing your own organic matter is excellent. That is a very wise and smart thing to do. And um, Bo, do you have water? there on that 40 acres do you can you like irrigate in some way um because that's going to open up a lot of options and then you can try to build the soil with that as well but just paddock shift systems um are going to do a lot to build the soil thanks to the people that threw money in yeah that was awesome a, that was a wild thing i didn't even know that this could happen Thinking of starting with a well. Do you know how low your water table is? <laughs> oh, water's only 30 feet down. Oh. Oh, there you go. <laughs> that must be nice. <laughs> he, can, he can dig that himself. Yeah. And it probably isn't through solid rock like it is with us. Wow. <laughs> oh, and a creek is yeah. not far away. All right. right so, on, right on. so he's got water. He's got water. So you can irrigate. And uh, that'll help to build soil tremendously even if you're just growing weeds, but there's, okay. there's certain crops you could plant that are going to like really help to build carbon. And, right. and we're out of time. Thank you, everybody. I hope this three and a half hours has been as lovely for you as it's been for us. I mean, look at how well our kicks are. We've gained more than $2,000 do doing this. This has been yeah. this, so smart. Andreas, you're so smart. This is, this was a lovely thing. So um, uh, thanks, everybody. I'm now going to click around to figure out. Oh, there it is. In stream. It's that big red button. Um, thanks. 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 This and was th nice. Thank you for letting me sit in on it today. I'm, Just... Yeah. Hey, how's your blender doing? <laughs> <laughs> Ready to go study the berm for a moment? <laughs> All right. Thanks, everybody. Uh, thanks for supporting my Kickstarter. Uh, this is exciting. Oh, look. Even more. Wow. Through. There's some more coin. How do you raise goats in Afghanistan in such a way to create forests? Paddock shift. Paddock shift. You've got to do paddock shift. You I like gotta... that. Ben says, wood loves pee. And then there's that too. I want to go out magic there. Magic potion. Put magic potion on the hugo culture. All right. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Your stream will stop immediately and you'll no longer... End. Okay. <laughs> okay.